honestly is what India wants from Surya in the ODI format. And the fact that he can do this on a slow or a difficult surface uh, when they were trying to take pace off the West Indies just shows the man's got extraordinary ability, can single-handedly make a competitive score look like a below par one. And today, I think the numbers suggest that this is a better ground to bat on. So watch out if, uh, if he gets going. And that's where the West Indies need an above par score today. Yeah, and just on Sky there, that's the difference between T20 and 50 over. 50 over, you almost have to set up your innings a lot of the time, whereas in T20, you can come in and play what you call your natural game. Tilak Brahma is someone who has batted very well with him, Sanjay Melbadri. Yeah, it's been very impressive in the three innings that we've seen from him so far. What he's done really sort of belies his age. Lots of composure. His temperament has been spot on. He's shown the ability to accelerate from ball one and also the composure to take his team over the line like he did in that last game. Lots to like about this young man, the leading run scorer so far in this series. And he just continues to show what he's shown in the IPL for the Mumbai Indians at the international level. And that speaks a lot about the talent and the quality that he possesses. And I'm pretty certain that we're going to see a lot, lot more of him in time to come. Yeah, very humid, very, very humid. And, and just a reminder that 2-1 to the West Indies so far. Tilak Brahma, they, they're talking about him now as someone who could perhaps feature in the ODI squad at that number four, that problematic number four position. What do you make of all that discussion? Well, first and foremost, he has a terrific list day record. So it's not just at the back of uh, the T20 performance in this series, however... I, I like how you keep mentioning that because it's important yes, to remember uh, that. strike rate of over, uh, over 100 and over 50 at an average in list A cricket. So he's got the tools, but Surya has shown us that runs in T20 format or even a good list A record doesn't necessarily translate into World Cup success. It's tempting, but I think it's too much to ask for a batter who's never played ODI cricket going straight into a World Cup. I'd like to see him in the Asia Cup squad, though. There is an opening, and he's showing the skill set that he can succeed even in a 50-over format. I'm just worried about taking gambles for World Cups. Uh, cautionary tale there from Ranak Kapoor. Robin Powell, as, as you confirmed, as we confirmed just now, has won the toss, decided to bat first, which the numbers indicate is a strength. Inclement weather, um, what's the, perhaps the possibility of that, and was it the right decision from Robman? Yeah, I don't think that you could necessarily make your decision based on what might happen. I know it's a thought in the back of your mind, but looking at the conditions, looking at the history of the team batting first, I think it has been or it is the right decision. Now they've got to back that up with the bat. So the openers have that responsibility. But yes, yeah, certainly from a historical standpoint and from what we've seen in the surface, it's the right decision. Uh, Shea Hope coming in at that number three position, I think that if they get off to a good start, as Ronak alluded to a little bit earlier, a chance maybe for Hetmeyer or Nicholas Puran to be promoted ahead of Shea, depending on the start. So a game of strategy all to, to look forward to in this contest. Yeah, I hope to see them take more risk or be more aggressive, certainly, at the top. I thought the openers were very conservative in the last game. Now, from India's perspective, are there any, let me not say concerns, but any areas in the bowling they need to be better at? The fact that the frontline seamers got taken down by Rovman Powell in the last game, they bowled only five overs between them, Mukesh coming into ball just two at the death, was because Hardik Pandya got those overs of spin out of the way before Puran came in. If he's put under pressure, then that is the kind of bowling that Powell likes to take down, that Hetmeyer might be better suited on taking down than Kuldeep and Chell, who are in terrific form and bowling well. So, for me, the game is going to be dictated by how much pressure West Indies can put on India early on and then force Hardik Pandya to be at his best as a tactical leader, which he wasn't in the first two games, but was in the last one. The West Indies need to play their best cricket in the first 10 overs here, Bish. If India win today, they will surely win the series tomorrow. So the West Indies need to win this today. India can I go win home now? Today, <laughs> they will surely win the series. Mark that bookmark it for Ronock. All right, gentlemen, it's very, very hot here. Hydrate well. We'll hear much more from Samuel Badri and Ronock Kapoor. I don't know if we want to hear much more from Ronock being a West Indian <laughs> tour, to be quite honest with you. We'll park him aside for the moment and we'll take a short break. On the other side of that short break, of course, we have much more for you. But the players have done their due diligence. Hardik and Powell and Puran are ready to fire. Telek Barma, can he light up North America? As I'm reminded you, short break, back with more.
We are here just as a reminder in Florida, North America, and it can be a little bit of a distraction for many visitors here because there's so much to see and do. The Indian fans have packed in here, and it is very, very warm. You know, it's better to be warm and hot and dry because we have a lot of rain that comes in here in the evenings. But for now, as I stand here on the surface, the pitch dimensions are a little instructive in that it's about 67 and 65 square of the wicket. So it's not the biggest ground in the world. Down the ground is about 74, decent enough hit. But just remember where the wind comes across this ground here there's a slight wind that comes into my chest so hitting with the wind there is going to be key shakira selman knows all about using the wind bowling not sure if she ever smacked any with the wind but shakira good morning to you i can almost see my reflection in this surface there's a nice little sheen to it what does that mean it means the ball will definitely slide onto the bat and the batters are going to be the happier of the two Bowlers here, seamers average about 23. The spinners, they fare much better. They average about 18 on this surface at Lord Hill. But I think the batters are going to enjoy this. The average score here is about 165. And we have seen that mid-range for this series so far. But we can expect a much higher scoring game here today. And we can expect above 180 perhaps. But the batters definitely will enjoy this pitch. I'm just trying to, to work out, given the numbers here, it seems as though batting first, much easier, as you said, chasing, much more difficult. Why would that be? Perhaps the surface just slows a little bit later on in the, in the day. Perhaps some of this pitch just comes apart. But we saw the last time West Indies and India played here. India got to 188 in that first innings that you pointed out. But West Indies were dismissed for 100. Mm. So you are correct in saying that. And more importantly, the spinners to all 10 of those West Indian wickets. So perhaps it just slows a bit in the, in the second innings. Could the West Indies, they're batting first, just a reminder, they're batting first today. Could they show more intent early? Oh, they have to. They only got to 38 or so in that first power play in the last game. They have to score more than that. They were too conservative and they will expect more, particularly from Calmeers. I think he will be key here as a left-hander as well. All right, we leave it there for the moment, Shakira. Mercifully, that breeze is coming into our chest here and cooling. Let me not flick that onto a length on the pitch here. I've got to be very, very careful. Anyway, Shakira and I have had enough time for the air conditioning. Now time to hear from a member of both camps playing here today, starting with the former West Indies captain. Darren Sammy, head coach of the West Indies men's white ball teams. I'm still getting used to saying that. <laughs> it's so much more nice talking to you with mic in hand. How have you assessed the first few months in the job? It's been a tough couple of months. It has been, you know, but uh, like I've said before, when I took up this post, I understood the assignment. And um, it's similar to when I was captain, mm. you know, where we were at a, as a team. And uh, now in the coaching world, it's, it's more understanding what's required and making sure I have the, the tools around me to help shift that needle. Um, obviously, the World Cup disappointment, not qualifying, but like I said before, it was a reflection of where we are as a team and the things that we have mm. to do in order to move forward. Uh, the T20s now is, is much better because we have more experienced yeah. guys, more seasoned guys in the setup and trying to prepare ourselves for the big event, which is next year in the Caribbean. So, um, yeah, a lot happening, but it's a job that I'm still excited about. Nothing like results to just change the mood. <laughs> the chance of beating India in a bilateral series, if they get the job done today, what could that mean or do for just the mood and the attitude of the T20? Yeah, it's, it's something we've spoken about, you know, the importance of, of, of winning, you know, especially against India, you know, coming from the last few months that we've had, you know, some of the stuff that's been said, you know, regarding our team and where we are. Um, I think this is very important uh, for this group moving forward, building confidence, especially in this format, like I said, we have a World Cup to prepare for, knowing that we are capable of beating the better sides in, 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 in the world and understanding that we are enough. Change of mindset, changing work ethic, changing attitude, you know, all these things required for us to move forward. But this is a, a massive, massive step for us in, in beating completing this series with, with a win against India. Surya Kumar Yadav, fresh at the back of a player of the match innings. How satisfying was that, Surya, getting a score? 
Uh, I think it was very satisfying because it came for team's victory. That's most important, and that's why that's what I've always looked for. Uh, whenever I score uh, score runs, uh, if if the team is winning, I'm happy. You've spoken very honestly about your ODI form, which which I found terrific. Do you feel like if you get some scores in this series, that the chances of an ODI World Cup are still up open? Uh, but I mean, you got to be honest with yourself, and everyone knows what's been happening around, so you can't hide behind the bush. Uh, and at the same time, I'm not thinking too much about what's happening, uh, what's going to happen ahead, uh, but currently thinking what's going on in this series. I uh, saw your numbers with Tilak Verma, and you two love batting together. Correct. Now, what is it about each other that you think causes these numbers? 600 runs over nine and over seven 50 plus partnerships. Do you enjoy batting with Tilak? Uh, my God, I didn't know that stats, but uh, yeah. sounds really great. Uh, but I've really enjoyed batting with him, as I rightly said the other day. And also, we share a very good bond when we go off the field. We spend a lot of time together. We go for dinners. Uh, we spend time together in our rooms, talk, chat, whatever, whenever we get time. So so that I think that camaraderie, it's been reflected on the field. All right, brilliant. Well, chance to level the series today. All the best. Yeah, thank you. Rano Kapoor chatting a little bit earlier to Surya Kumar Yadav and Darren Sami. A lot of blue around here at this Broward County Stadium. West Indies taking on India. West Indies 2-1 up. Two games to play, including this. We are ready for the action on the other side of a short break. We will be closer to the start of play. fourth T20I in this series with one to go. West Indies lead in this five-match series. 
two to one at the moment. This man on screen, the captain, will be looking, no doubt, to level things out and have an opportunity to chat with his team. Wonderful conditions at the moment here at the Central Broward County Stadium. West Indies opening batters looking to give their team a good start. The final leg of this multi-format tour here from Broward County Stadium in Florida. The fourth cool stylish fans, T20I, powered by black and white, West Indies versus India. And just as a reminder, this series stands at two to one in favor of the West Indies. Match ball presented by Pasham Global. Spin has had such an impact in this tournament. And this partnership has also had an impact. I'll log on to the website to get more details. There's so much anticipation, a very, very good crowd in, as we've expected to support these two teams. Brandon King hasn't had the best of series so far. Top score of 42 in that last game in Providence. Not a runner ball. We'll be looking to do much better today. Oh. Cal Mears alongside him. Best of 73 in his T20I career. Aksa Patel, given the opportunity with the new ball. It's a strategy that Hadik Pandya used in the last game, trying to get his spinners out of the way quite early. Deep backward square. And deep mid wicket of two fielders out. So the length will have to be into the surface, back of a length. But mid on and mid off in the circle can't be too full. And incidentally, because it's a left-hand orthodox opening the bowling, the left-handed Carl Mears will take first strike for the first time in the series. First ball, 40-20 I. Good morning, Darren Ganga. Morning, Sam. Hello, everyone. A few things uh, to take note of. This square relatively dry, so... With the heat, it should lose a lot of moisture. Both these openers, highest individual score in the series, not going past 42. 42 scored by Brandon King in the last T20 International. The 50 run partnership as well. Down the ground, first boundary. Hitting into the wind, but it doesn't matter. Off the mark in style. This is what he's known for, Carl Mears. This is what is expected from him at the top of the innings in T20 cricket. Enforce himself onto the bowlers. Focus heavier on boundary hitting. Giving a good start to the innings for the West Indies. To the offside this time, not as well timed. Just a couple, but that's the reason. Actually, it's good running. A return for three. And that's the reason why he's taken the strike in the first over for the first time to try to take down the left and orthodox. Yeah. Last couple days, we saw rain in the evening time here in Greater Florida. We just slow the outfield a bit. Really good from Brandon King. Just get Mears back on strike. Confident start. 
power plays haven't been that great for the West Indies during the course of this series. It's something that they've spoken about. A lot more intent so okay. far. Change in field. Deep backward square comes in. Long one goes into position. Finds the gap, finds the boundary. Exceptional start from Mears. Great start for the West Indies. 14 without loss. Look at both teams in there going with an unchanged team from the last game. Had their first win in the series. In the last match at Providence in Guyana. West Indies with three changes to day 11 for today's match. Ashdeep Singh. From the players pavilion end. Lots of intent in that first over from Kyle Mears. It needs to be seen how Brandon King will approach things, whether or not he gives Mears the strike and gives him an opportunity to continue. Well, the first thing we'll look for is swing, whether or not Ashdeep Singh is able to swing this new ball. A much more difficult proposition if you're facing a left arm seamer who can swing the ball into you as a right-hander. He's been leading with Mukesh Kumar with the ball and in that fast bowling department for India. Has protection in the deep. An opportunity for the West Indies. Another one to close this series off. They were leading 2 0 going into the third. Lots of blue in the crowd. And they pulled one back to keep the series alive. West Indies haven't won back to back series in T20I since 2017. And also in their favor. West Indies, no team has been 2 0 down in a five match T20I series and come back to win. And so it will be an his a historical effort from India if they're able to. That's another healthy and positive strike from Mayors. Stand and deliver. Straight away, you can see it's a good surface for hitting through the line. Ball skids on to you. There's not an excessive amount of bounce, historically. And we're seeing that straight away. That was not in the slot, not a bad delivery in terms of length, but a little too wide. And it's allowed Kyle Mares to free his arms. Yeah, just swatted it back past the bowler. Wicket, wonderful reply from Ashdeep Singh. Aggression from the batter previously, aggression from the bowler now. They needed that wicket. Kyle Mears was looking dangerous. He has to depart now. And it's another disappointment uh, for the left-handed batter. Change in pace, cross seam delivery, a little extra bounce. 135 plus clicks. And he was looking to play that ramp. Didn't get enough bat on it. Went straight through to the wicket keeper. Sancho Samson making no mistake. And it's the first wicket down for the West Indies. 19 for one.
Shea Hope into the team for the first time in this series. Strike rate a little bit on the lower side. This is the reason why he's here. Very good delivery. Short, attacking, aggressive, well directed. Trying to play that one over the wicket keeper. Got gloves. Full stretch from Sanju Samson. That's what they needed. Ashley Singh strikes. And an early blow for the West Indies. One of the reasons why she hope is in this team, in addition to the string of low scores from Johnson Charles, is his ability to play the spinners, who we think will have a significant role to play. And last time West Indies played against India here at this stadium, Spin took all 10 wickets. Bishnoi Kuldeep, this man, picked up three wickets, along with Aksa Patel. Successful over comes to an end. 19 for one. Naksa Patel might feel a little bit more comfortable against the two right-handers. That's generally what he tries to do, angle the ball into the pads, into the stumps. I'm sure everyone is looking on and they've seen you. What we saw in the last game is for the first time Aksa Patel bowled his full complement of four overs. He was exceptional. One for 24. Played an integral part in wicket taking and reducing run scoring for India. Did the West Indies to just 159. Off the mark, Shea Hope. Not exactly where he wanted to hit it. Malik Pandya with a smile on his face. Uh, has had some good experiences playing here. Oh, yeah. The Central Broad Regional Park. For the second time in the over, we've seen that shot from Brandon King. I'm trying to go with the angle. Aksa Patel will be very interested with him going in that direction. She hope is trying to do the opposite. He's trying to go inside out. And it's a litmus test of sorts for She Hope, who last played a T20 international against India in March 2022. Opened the batting, just got eight. He's got a mid-20s average. Strike rate of about 121. Boy, boy, He's been Rambo. working hard on his white ball game. Of course, uh, the ODI captain for the West Indies. End of the third, 23 for one. Very, very important game for both teams. India, they need to win to stay alive in the series. The West Indies will want to secure another T20 International Series win. Here's Venter Chahal replaces Ashdeep Singh. And just a one over from Ashdeep. Trial by spin. Two right-handers, so not too surprised by this move. He's shown the dynamism to bowl 
at any stage of the innings, Yuzvendra Chahal. Picked up two wickets in his very first over in the series at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. Likes bowling against right-handers, so again, he'll feel quite relaxed with these two at the crease. Harik Pandya in India will also know that the West Indies, generally speaking, the average run rate in this power play phase has been more dominant than India. Down the ground, wonderful strike from Brandon King. Just a little advancement gets to the pitch and deposits it. Not often do we see West Indian batters use their feet to spinners. This is a really good sign for Darren Sami and all West Indian fans. Places more pressure on the bowler when you can use this approach. Yeah, they need to keep going. As we've mentioned, it's a good surface. Average first inning score here, 165. I think they need more than that, upwards of 180 to be challenging. And to get there, they've got to capitalize on this power play. Looking at 50, 55 if they can. Glorious from Shea Hope. Not the easy of, easiest of strokes to play, but he's so elegant when he does. This is uh, one of his strengths, his ability to drive the ball through that cover region. Shea Hope scores a lot of runs in that region and not afraid to take risks. Played it to perfection. Hasn't really tried to turn the ball just yet. Yuzvendra Chahal, most of his deliveries front of the hand, looking to slide it on. We'll have to revisit that plan on the surface. It's just sliding on nicely. Expensive start so far. One delivery left. Ah! We're going down the leg side. We might have a little discussion. Not interested, Leslie Reefer Jr. I don't think Hardik Pandya is too interested either. 36 for one. Yeah, I wasn't too interested in that last appeal, Hardik. 13, over, 13 runs, rather, from that first over from Yuzendra Chahal. Expensive start from Aksa, but he's recovered well. He'll continue. Yeah. Finds the gap and will find the boundary. This is where he's so good. Shea Hope with that inside-out, offside play. Look, it's not a bad delivery from Aksa Patel. It was relatively close. She Hope gave himself room to access the ball and hit through that offside. Again, evidence of how good this surface is. Another fine stroke from She Hope playing to his strength. Yeah, maybe just try to overhit that one when he looks to time it. Is very graceful. Last ball of the last over from Chahal. And they're pitching outside and may not have gone on to hit the stump either. So good decision from Hardik and the umpire. Straight to the fielder. Let's finish my point on that. Average run rate achieved by West Indies in the series in the last game. They were a little bit slow, but generally speaking, They've been better than India. 8.4, that average runs per over in the power play. At the moment, they're going at over nine. India throughout the series, their average run rate in the power play phase with the bat, 7.7. .7. So once more, Hardik Pandya focusing on this phase, using spin and that bias Oy, nice to day. contain run scoring.
So much of uh, thought and strategy into countering opposition teams and areas of strength. Short with the wind. Gets the boundary. A good way to end the over for the West Indies. Six from Shea Hope. Five gone, 48 for one. Ashdeep Singh. Morning, Shakira Selman, and greeted with this shot from Shea Hope. Shea Hope, that is an impetus to West Indies. In for his first game of the series. He's going on quite a healthy rate. Good way to end that over. Ashdeep coming round the wicket with that deep square and deep point. All the way for six from Brandon King, which brings up the West Indies 50. It's that sort of ground batting first, highest scoring facility. Yeah, Ashdeep deciding to go around the wicket, which means the angle is into the right-handed batter. This time a bit too full, but on this pitch, it's quite easy to hit through the line of the ball. Brandon can easily clear his long on. And he has to he has to up his tempo. It's this sort of higher scoring surface compared to Ghana and Trinidad. Got him. Brilliant catch. Ash deep again. Is pace the way to go early on this facility? That's a good catch. King goes. Arshdeep back over the wicket after he was deposited for that six. This one wide of all stump, but it's an excellent take by Kudit Yadav diving away to his left. Arshdeep gets his second wicket. Brandon King goes for just 18. West Indies 54 for two. Second leading run scorer of the series coming into this match here today. Nicholas Perron has been in good form. Yeah, if we talk about those chess matches, Shakira, and obviously in the slower pitches at Taruba and Guyana, there was that battle to get spin into play early for various reasons. Look at that catch again. Yes. Really good timing of that dive. It is to his stronger side, Kudit Yadav. But it wouldn't have been easy. He wouldn't have expected it to come to him firstly. And also it would have flown to him. So really good catch. Nice to his strong hand. Yeah, Brandon King strike rate 112. I thought his innings in the previous game. West Indies were 
Well, they said they didn't want to lose many wickets, but it was too slow. And again on a good surface, a strike rate of 112. Now, Puran. No breathers, first ball to him. And I think the choices for Hardik Pandya is he, we understand and understood why he wanted a lot of spin early in Ghana in the previous game and why spin in the series. Just wonder what he thinks about this surface though and whether it is spin or seam earlier. That has been more beneficial. Ashdeep's figures compared to the others, very good. And two wickets to him. Puran off the mark. 55 for two, power play complete. all the fans who've come in from various parts of North America and beyond enjoying their time and that man Kuldeep is into the attack in the games that he's played he's had a telling impact on the innings and of course outside the power play now he has the cushion of extra fielders riding the boundary Straight away, straight away, he gets Puran again. For the second match in a row, that is big. He is an impact bowler. Yeah, Kodi continues to get the upper hand of Nicholas Puran. Just the first delivery he's bowled at him, first delivery into his spell. And Puran immediately decides to take on that long on fielder. He doesn't get enough of it, and it's an easy catch for Skyo on the long arm boundary. Kuldi takes Puran. Puran doesn't have an impact this game. He goes for just one. West Indies in trouble at 55 for three. The West Indies captain will have a fair amount of spin. Perhaps thrust at him if he spends any time at the crease. So far in this series, he's striking at 127 against spin, 175 against pace. Here's the wicket again. Very good length. But Puran just reaches for that ball into that shot a bit too early. For that reason, he isn't able to make full contact. But that's the blue wicket. That's the wicket. That will just allow Hardik Pandya to use whatever bowlers he wants. Perhaps Atsar can come for his fourth now that Puran is gone. Yeah, the option in the in, in this middle phase where there is more protection on the boundary for spin. You know, it's a great thing about Kuldeep, and I mentioned it during the ODI series, I think, that he goes on to a length much more consistently and from early with the modifications in his action. The bad balls now are few and far between, or so far. Yeah, he hasn't bowled too many bad deliveries. 
for this entire tour, both that ODA series and the T20 series. It's both of beautiful tosses, but you tend to see more bad deliveries from with rest spinners. Very good again. A little quicker through the air and again on to that length. It's not that he won't give you a bad ball. It's just that the volume, the sheer volume of them, since he's got that front arm and his alignment better, his accuracy has gone up a notch. I wish we had a way to measure that. Yeah. Top class, top class from Kuldeep Yadav again. Spin to Rovman Powell has worked a treat. Just have to feel for Rovman Powell. He's out here way earlier than he would have wanted. And because Shimron Hetmeyer is not in form, they've gone with the informed captain. And unfortunately, he's unable to pick the delivery. And it's an easy catch and slip. Powell goes for just one. West Indies slide further, 57 for four. Scores of 10, 22, and 9 in the series so far from Shimron Hetmeyer. One of those that the West Indies will be looking to to negate spin, but has struggled this far in the series. Yeah, Ruffman Powell just looking to work that one leg side. But it is it is the one that spins across him. So he just gets the leading edge. Outstanding again from Kuldeep Yara, 57 for four. West Indies were 54 for one, then 54 for two. They've lost three wickets for three in eight deliveries. Yusvindra Chahel. Call is for two. Easily taken. And you'll see lots of that with this man, Shea Hope, at the crease. Hopefully. He is in the team primarily because he's played the Indian spinners quite well across the tour. Oh! And also because Johnson Charles has failed. The wicket of Rothman Powell didn't seem to deviate that much off the surface. Now is when the spinners come into to their own. Uh, just reflecting as to whether Hardik could have maybe have used another over of seam in the power play. And that is gone. Because in the middle over, spin is taking control. I think Hardik tried to mimic what he did in that third or T20. Where Shahal also bowled fourth over in that power play. That game he went for 11 in that over. He went for 13 here. We saw lots of deliveries out of the front of the hand, surprisingly. 
on the pitch where the ball does already slide on. That's perhaps why there wasn't a lot of grip in that power play. That's, that's what I was thinking about. It wasn't going to grip. So he went slider, slider. Jason Holder, of course, for those just joining us, is back a couple of days ago at practice. He went through his bowling. He went through his batting nicely. Obed McCoy didn't bowl at all in practice two days ago. They're trying to manage his workload. As he continues to recover from a brief history or protracted history of injuries, but can admire hit his best form. West Indies need him at his best. Yeah, lots will depend on Hatmeyer. At the start of this series, Rob McCall spoke about how important he and Puran were going to be to their chances. And how much West Indies would relay on their left handed batters to negate the impact of the spin. Yeah, and he got a half century here last year, 56. So you'll be hoping that's a good memory that spurs him on. 62 for four. Republic Bank CPL 2023, not too far away. Lots of action coming your way. You can get your tickets at www.cplt20.com. Cool deep again. I think, that you, I think you mentioned it, Shakira, at the pitch report when I posed the question to you about what has been the challenge for teams batting here second sometimes. Numbers favor the batting team first. That doesn't mean it's going to happen every time, but as the practice sessions went on and on here, the, the bounce got lower and slower Oy. on the practice session. So that's something to keep your eye on. I'm not saying it's going to happen again, but just keep your eye on that to see whether facilities or conditions evolve. The reason I say that in Ghana as well, something we didn't talk about. I tried to get data on it, but I thought India didn't need it in Ghana batting second. But I thought the consistent drizzle, the persistent drizzle when they batted, stopped the pitch from getting any worse. Didn't make the pitch better, but it certainly stopped it from getting slower and lower when India batted and Sky played a, a magnificent innings. Yeah, I'm sure lots of viewers would have been wondering how comes it seems so much easier to bat in that second innings in that game you were talking about. We saw batters able to hit through the line of the ball and it's not something you see very often on the youth surface. Whoa! Nicely, nicely. Wonder when we will see Mukesh he bowled his last his two overs at the back end of the innings last time. Whether we'll see Hardik bowl an over or two at all this game. Ball is hard to get away right now. Three of seven, three of eight for Hetmeyer. 65 for four. Just four bowlers used so far by Hardik Pandya, Arshdeep and Kuldeep Yadav, taking two wickets each.
Nice straight hit from Shea Hope. Yeah, very good from Shea Hope. And we did say, of all the West Indian batters, he did seem the most comfortable against the wrist spinners, or at least of all the right-handed batters in this West Indies lineup. He just shows that confidence by the way he's moved his feet throughout the inning so far. 29 of 18, Shea Hope. Very good, very good again from Shea Hope. Replacing Johnson Charles <clears throat> in the 11 today and proving to be a good move so far. Again, very good use of the feet by Shea Hope. Every time Shahal just loops that one, he's down the wicket, giving himself enough room to get the hands through the shot. And this time he hits it for a maximum. Just chatting to him a couple of times at practice sessions in Ghana. He's at a, a place in his career now where he feels settled. He's obviously more mature and he understands his game to the extent that he's fairly comfortable now in T20 cricket in the shortest form. He's got the fastest half century for West Indies. 16 deliveries that he's been playing in a few franchise leagues overseas in Pakistan, in Bangladesh. So he's at that place. Yeah, and importantly, he's been playing in the subcontinent where he would have faced lots of spin. So that, perhaps, another reason he's more confident facing the spinners. Sheen on the surface, there'll be another shorter format tournament post this in a couple of days, so the groundsmen have some significant work to do. Just keep your eye on whether it slows up and gets lower later. Not to the extent, mind you, of some back in the Caribbean. But keep a measurement of it for the game tomorrow. Ten overs gone. 79 for four and blue waters drinks break and gosh they need it out there Greater Fort Lauderdale, what a place it is to visit. It's dubbed uh, the Venice of America because of its coastline to the Atlantic Ocean. Also, it's a yachting capital of America. Fabulous place for shopping, for nightlife, to be out and about. The 
It's a happy Indian start in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fourth T20I to keep alive in the five match series. Two for Ashdeep, two for Kuldeep. Shea Hope returning to the West Indies T20I side has looked impressive. Ashdeep with the crucial blow. Kyle Mayers is looking dangerous and Kuldeep Yadav is in the bowling form of his life. Dented uh, this first innings effort in what is a de facto home game for India. It's come from all corners of the United States. Celebration for a weekend, back to back games. Kuldeep Yadav has uh, given them plenty to cheer about. Completion of the drinks break. This fourth uh, cool, stylish fans T20, powered by black and white. Famous Indian sitcom. Yeah, special welcome to you, Rana Kapoor. First time to Fort Lauderdale, to Florida, in the USA. I know you've been out and about enjoying yourself. Had the chance to see Lionel Messi play last night. Yes, I did, Darren Ganga. Thank you very much. You're yeah, ticking one thing at a time. Messi scored as well. Samuel Badri was with us, saw Jason Holder, Roston Chase in attendance. As of now, Shimron Hetmeyer must score. It's been short of a score in uh, it was a highly publicized return to the West Indies side. Disappointing ODI series is due. Finished here in Florida this time last year with a 50. Kuldeep to resume post drinks. Shimron Hetmeyer has had quite the tonic he drinks. It's a positive start. Four. He'll remember that innings that he played back in 2018 for the Guyana Amazon Warriors. Shimron Hetmeyer, still the youngest player in the Caribbean to score a CPL 100 right here at this venue. Oftentimes, with that sort of memory, just spurs you on a little bit more as a player. Needs to deliver. Hasn't been amongst the runs in this series. Hetmeyer, 10, 22, and 9. He'll be mindful of those scores. Yeah, how the West Indies play the wrist spin is effectively going to decide this contest. That's what Rothman Powell said too. He's relying on Puran and Hetmeyer to counter the threat of Chehel and Kuldeep. It just seemed like the wicket of Puran. Such a big moment in the game. First ball to Kuldeep. It's a different approach. The start of the T20I series where Puran was looking to give Kuldeep the respect that numbers suggest he should get off strike, take down the other bowlers. Different today. I think that's why that man's in the team too, Shea Hope. Ability to play quality wrist spin, he's looked good. Just as I say that. Again, looking leg side to Kuldeep Yadab, who will generally turn the ball into Shea Hope and then use that googly to go away from him. He's been smart in his approach for spinners turning the ball away from him. He's opted to hit offside, so managing risks with his batting. Yeah, an innings of uh, great personal significance, you think, Darren, for someone like Shea Hope. What kind of T20 batter do the West Indies want at number three in the World Cup? Was it a Johnson Charles who had breathtaking series in South Africa, high scoring games? But on wickets that may take some turn, Shea Hope's played the kind of innings that uh, could dig them out of hole. <laughs> Now they've gone for the second. And I wonder if Sanju Sampson would have collected that. There was an opportunity for a run out. Turns out uh, they get two to finish the over. 88 for four. Yeah, 
Fans of both teams uniting, celebrating the moment. First of two matches here in Florida. Right, they decided to go for the second result of the misfield. Shubman Gill, the fielder. If the throw was a little more accurate, I think he would have been gone. He was way short of his ground. Shea Hope. So a clear missed opportunity in the outfield by India. Captains into the attack. He's been tested as a leader, Hardik Pandya, tactically. Went uh, pace heavy with the new ball, bowled himself. Second T20I. Different approach. Counting on spin. Now introducing himself after 11 overs. Shimmer on Hetmeyer. Welcomes the Indian captain into the attack with utter disdain. First six for him. Although he likes spin, he is uh, equally adept at playing seam. Shimron Hetmeyer, that's his uh, strong scoring zone. Just wide of long on. Once there's length, it's bread and butter for him hitting in that region. Straight away gives Hardik Pandya something to think about. If he thought he'd get away with uh, a loser. Very good batting. Fielders inside the circle. Hetmeyer helps himself to back-to-back -back boundaries. Good decision by Hetmeyer to just open the offside as well. Oftentimes, he is one-dimensional, thinking about leg side without balancing that approach with the offside. Uses the pace, finds the gap. And it's a length delivery. Gone for four. Are they under pressure? A more purposeful post that drinks break at Meyer. West Indies need him to come good. It's been a quiet series for him. Wide return. Do the setup. Feels like uh, a home game. For India, it's supposed to be the West Indies as hosts. The growing popularity of the game in the United States, fresh at the back of an inaugural MLC season. Huge Indian diaspora. The other thing that uh, the West Indies will know, as we see the 100 comes up for the West Indies, is India, despite being down in the series, they've dominated this middle phase of the innings with the bat. Average runs per over in this phase achieved by the West Indies, 6.8 as compared to 7.9 achieved by India. So, they will want to maintain and sustain a tempo. No! Oh. Often here, coaches and players talk about how important those middle overs are. Overs number seven to overs number 15. Yeah, and Shea Hope, his first appearance in this series has quietly just gone on 42 of 25, strike rate of 168. There's a big grunt at uh, disappointment of not piercing the field last ball too. Good over for the West Indies. 14 from Hardik Pandya's first. 102 for four.
double strike from uh, Kuldeep Yadav that just dented start that Kyle Mears had uh, given the West Indies with those big opening overs. There is a rebuilding phase that's nicely coming together as Yuzvendra Chahal returns. This partnership 45 of 31 now. Chahal wicketless. Sheho on strike. Spoke about him being selective and choosing very good options. She hoped the ball spinning away from him. He's gone offside and at most through that mid on region, not trying to hit against the turn. Generally speaking, a good indication as to how he's managed risk in his innings. And in the absence of Puran and Paul in this phase, he's done an excellent job with the bat. Yeah, very good, Shea Hope. But Shimron Hetmeyer, this is a matchup that doesn't favor him. Bragging rights in the Royals dressing room to Yuzvendra Chahal, dismissing Hetmeyer three times in six innings, an average of nine. Including once in this series. Saying in uh, one of the pre match interviews, Chahal, that enjoys getting Hetmeyer. I can tease him. Colorful character. But he's not been among the wickets as much as he would have liked. And another thing India would be looking at, Darren, is Kuldeep and Chahal. Will they always be able to play both wristies? Kuldeep has outbowled Yuzvendra Chahal this series. I also thought there was an opportunity to probably promote Shimron Hetmeyer ahead of Ravman Paul to have a left right combination at the crease. And Paul followed Nicholas Puran. Mindful, mindful of the threat of Chehel, even if he's going at uh, just under 10 and over. This is a responsible innings from Hetmeyer. Imperative that he bats deep. Hope goes big and falls short. It's an excellent innings up and until that point. But Yuzvendra Chehel has his first wicket as Hope holds out to Aksar Patel at long on. Just been praising Shea Hope about his ability to hit straight and hit offside and not against the turn. Bat blade just turning too sharply on that occasion. Maybe he felt the wind factor was strong enough to take the ball over the boundary line. Another triumph for Chahal. Hope with a solid innings, 45. It's 106 for five now. In comes Romario Shepard at number seven ahead of Jason Holder. Pooling change working for Dick Pandya. Shepard had a good series with ball. Just a terrible time to lose a wicket from a West Indies point of view. That partnership was looking good. Yeah, intentional flick of the wrist to turn the ball away from the right hand. It was the right length cramped. She hoped to some extent. Broke that important partnership for the West Indies, 49. Googly to finish. Successful over for Chehel, 106 for five.
106 for five with seven overs to go. Mukesh Kumar at least has the opportunity to bowl four overs today. Introduced right at the end of the 30 20 international at Guyana. It's a tour that he'll remember. Captain all three formats. Bowling coach Paras Mamre just speaking ahead of this game. That he's most impressed by temperament he's shown in adapting from one format to the other so quickly. And we've witnessed the role that he's played for Hardik Pandya with the ball. Bowls primarily in the back half of the innings. You most definitely see him with two overs in that last five overs of the innings for India. Showed great accuracy with his Yorkers. He's a steady bowler, Mukesh Kumar. Here he is. And he did dismiss Shimron Hetmeyer in the last T20I. Aaron Trondred gets them to 163. It's a ground that has uh, given us big scores in the past. Batting first is an advantage. Behind something in excess of uh, 75, though. Still batting to come. They bat deep, the West Indies. And in the absence of Alzari Joseph, Odin Smith, more than capable. Jason Holder in next. Wonder if he could have come in ahead of Shepard, but this seems to be the pecking order. Something we did see, Darren, in the first few T20Is is how difficult it got. Score boundaries as the pitch surfaces started slowing up. Back-to-back -back games on this surface today and tomorrow. Already seeing Hardik Mukesh resort to the slow ball early. Walked across, managed to get his bat down in time as uh, Mukesh went for a vacant leg stump. Now, this is evidence of how good Mukesh Kumar is. Last minute changing his initial thoughts, reacting to the movement from Shimron Hetma is not an easy thing to do as a fast bowler. Just went attacking Yorker. Very good again. And there has to be a reason that Mukesh Kumar is uh, impressed. Think Tank to such a degree that they were happy to have him play ahead of Avesh Khan, Umran Malik. Both of whom have been capped before him. Pressed in the ODIs. Clearly seems to be an option for different phases for Ardik Pandya took the new ball in the opening T20I. Didn't come into the attack till the last four overs in the last one. Started well. This is already terrific rare end bowling from Mukesh, even though we're into the 14th. He's gone primarily Yorkers and shown very good accuracy with that type of delivery. What the West Indies will also know is uh, at least four of the five remaining overs will come from their fast bowlers, Indian fast bowlers. So they will have to find a way to score a little bit more, accelerate that run rate in that last five over phase. That is an exhibition. Some outstanding Yorker bowling from Mukesh Kumar. 1-1-2 one, one, for five.
Six overs to go. Arshdeep. Two wickets will look to close out the innings. Mukesh Kumar has been introduced into the 14th over. Kuldeep still has one. Hardik Pandya has gone back to Aksar Patel though. Three overs in the power play. Shepard goes big. And Shepard gets six. I was just about to say that this is the over that the West Indies should target. What we saw from Mukesh Kumar is that accuracy and we would expect that he'll bowl the 16th, 18th and 20th. As Romario Shepard has done, he's targeted Aksa Patel straight away. Nails that shot down the ground. This could be Aksar Patel's revenge. Fielders are going to collide. Samson makes sure it's his own, though. There's a bit of confusion, but it doesn't matter. Aksar Patel has the last laugh, and he has Romario Shepard's wicket. And the innings short-lived. Again, there was some length on that delivery, maybe. A slowing of the pace. Hint of uh, extra turn. Shepard going across the line to his demise. Gone for nine from six. Another one down for the West Indies. It's 118 for six. towering presence of Jason Holder back in playing 11 rested as a precaution the last game as he did some damage to his knee the third T20 I he's here because uh, Aksar Patel had the last word on Romario Shepard after being hit for six he just went a little bit straighter cramped Romario Shepard pulled the length back a bit. Really good response because that was an over that uh, the West Indies were looking to target. Shepard gets a couple of boundaries away. Hardik Pandya suddenly starts thinking, oh, did I need to go to Aksar? Could have had Kuldeep pull this over and the Seamers finishing it off. He's been on the money. India's a T20 captain. Now all hopes on Hetmeyer. Oh, hey, no run. I wonder if the Shepherd wicket will just change when Hetmeyer wants to shift gears and and get a boundary of ball. Both Hetmai and Jason Holder will be aware that it's important for both of them to bat at least to the 19th over. If they go at the average runs over that they've scored in this series in the last five, will get them close to that 160, 165 marker. Eight point five generally is the runs per over in the last five scored by both teams. End of the over, fifteen gone, one twenty-one for six.
121 for six. Shimon Hetmeyer, 28 from 24. Yeah, Virat's not here. Now, what can the West Indies do to give a final kick to the innings? Mukesh Kumar continues. Samuel Batteries alongside me. Hello again, Samuel. Hello, Bish. Hello, everyone. Yeah, they need to get, I would think, upwards of 175, given what we've seen from the surface and the dimensions on offer at this venue. And they're desperate to get another win to level the series. Maya really hasn't fired either in the ODIs or in the T20s so far. Last time he played at this venue against India scored half century so good memory scored a t20 century in the cpl here sometime back as well so it's a favorable venue for him lots of overs remaining if he can be there to the very end west indies should be in a good position And the bowlers will be mindful when bowling to him that if he's batting from that far end, there's a slight wind that comes across the ground as Jason Holder stands now from his leg to off. Do you want to defend that side? I wonder when Kuldeep will bowl his final over. He got Jason Holder out, dismissed two games ago. Knocked him over, off the pad, onto the stumps, Mukesh Kumar. He's having the time of his career so far on this Caribbean UFA tour. Yeah, really good. He's been really good throughout this tour, Mukesh Kumar. Particularly at the back end of the innings. But onto pad, onto stumps. Lots of ricochets going on there. Jason Holder does make a significant impact with the bat, 123 for seven. Odin Smith with a healthy strike rate across his career so far. He has been very accurate generally in the series. Mukesh Kumar just bowled one over, I think, with the new ball in the very first game. Since then, he's primarily been used at the back end of the innings. And they're enjoying the exchanges so far, the Indian supporters here at the stadium. West Indies at 123 for seven on what seems to be a good surface on the par so far. There's a deep backward point. Will he go wide at some point to Odin? No, he goes straight early. Oh no, free hit coming up for Shimron Hetmeyer. Where will Mukesh attempt to hide this delivery from the set batter? Yeah, an opportunity here for Shimron Hetmeyer to free his hands, free his arms. Confirmation of that no ball. Significant one at that. 
Is it a wide Yorker? Should be. Hetmeyer does well. He anticipated the whiff on the delivery too. And that is gone all the way. Yeah, very skillful from Sherman Hetmeyer. Moved quite early, moved a long way across. Kept his eyes on the ball for most of it. And gets a good result for him and the West Indies. So that free hit capitalized upon by Hetmeyer. This over 11 runs. That's what they're looking for in and around that area for the remainder of this innings, the West Indies, and more. Still wondering when Kobe will bowl that final over. Got ball to end, one, three, two for seven. A couple tall towers, but not enough. That double wicket strike in the seventh over from Kuldeep really set them back a good partnership. They need more. Four overs left. Kulip Yadav has one up his sleeve and that is going to be utilized now. Struck early against Nicholas Puran has continued. Can he strike again in this over? Hetmeyer feels as though he's missed out on an opportunity there. Down the leg side, essentially a free hit for him. Got the start from Kuldeep in his final again. The point of difference. Top class. Oh, to hit that. With that type of power over extra cover for six. Hetmeyer getting some way back to good touch. He hasn't had much of an impact in this tour, Shimron Etmeyer. His highest score of the series so far, what a shot that is with the spin. Wonderful. Oh, naughty, naughty. Because it allows Hetmeyer to get back on strike and get that extra run. Mukesh was pleading to Kuldeep that he should have been at the stumps. What he's trying to do now is to, to ask Hetma to hit into that wind. He hit him over extra cover with the wind. Early in the over for six. So he's asking him to hit straighter now. He yeah, makes that adjustment in his line, cool leap. Wouldn't mind bowling to Odin Smith. Maybe the googly at him. There is a slip going in. Position possibly for the one that leaves the right hander. Just two deliveries remaining, and wisely, Sherman Hetmeyer has a chat with him, perhaps to indicate just that. 
two deliveries left. See him out and look to take down the next three. that Ash Deep has a couple of overs up his sleeve as well on the which end he will come back from yeah they're not prepared to give him anything after that six so it's the end of cool deep two for 26 from his four one four four for seven Kuldeep Yadav's pitch map today as a wrist spinner. That's something that you look for where your conglomeration of deliveries are. He's been quite consistent, the leading wicket taker in the series with six wickets, Kuldeep. Right, Ashdeep is back. He got the two wickets in the power play. He was good then. He'll be hoping to finish the innings better than the last game where he took a little bit of tap from Robman Powell. Have a look at the projected scores for the West Indies. On the current rate, they'll get to 169. Maybe looking at 11s from here on end to get to 177, 180. Remember the past score batting first 165, but we feel that they need to be a few more to challenge this Indian batting lineup. right of your screen there you see those three deep feelers lining the boundary so there unless he bluffs there won't be any wide yorkers unless he bluffs he's coming round the wicket to bowl straight and bowls too straight also has the fine leg in the circle so any bit of bat there from odin smith could potentially go for four but this is what he's trying to do Hit, ask Odin Smith to hit into the wind, not give him any arms to free. Nice and tight and straight. Perhaps mix it up with some slow balls or the short delivery. Good work from Aksa. Compliments again to those spectators who have come in it's very warm out there to members of the crew again who have been posted a lot of them in the humidity and the sunshine outside there it's a wonderful occasion to have t20 international cricket again here in florida hope you're enjoying it across the globe So good to see the rise of Ashdeep Singh and the rise of his fans wherever he goes. And such an impact he's had on the game in the IPL initially and then with this Indian senior team. Just continues to grow in stature. Continues to evolve.
you know, when he's at his best, Ashley, but obviously you're looking for that swing that he gets, each way swing, which he's developed across the last couple of seasons when the ball is new. 50, 150 comes up for the West Indies. But his understanding of when to go short, when to take pace off, when he's at his very best, is very canny. Little subtle soft skills. Go, 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 go. That Yorker is very helpful. And that knuckleball, something that he's developed of late to take all the pace off the delivery. Now as a batter, you're expecting pace on and then you see that pace off. And very good Yorkers. So he changes up things subtly and regularly that you can't predict what he's doing. At my own 48. It's a welcome return to form for Shimron Hetmeyer. And the West Indies needed this today. His fifth half century in this format. And it follows a 56 that he last scored on this ground just over a year ago against the same opponents. And he's had to do some hard work in the sunshine and he hoped to continue to finish off in the last couple of overs. I yeah, got that 56 of 35 in the fifth and final T20I against India last time around. And this time around, he's keeping his team in contention. The lone batter essentially in this lineup to get a score of some significance. Mears. Got off to a flyer 17 from just seven. Hope was really good as well. 45 from just 29 and a good partnership with Admire. How many can they get in the remaining two? A lot of deep protection on that leg side boundary for Mukesh Kuma. Hitting with the wind that side. Who's a call again? Of course, the T20 World Cup will be hosted in the Caribbean along with the USA. All of these games are in the build up to that. Both teams looking for information about the players that they can potentially look towards. They haven't won a T20 World Cup since the inaugural edition in 2007. West Indies last one in 2016. Yeah, changing the field set here as well. A deep point has been pushed right back out on the boundary. So there's an option for a, a wide yoke or a wide pace off. It's an option. It does go wide up the off stump, but can't get it through or pass cover. Mukesh Kumar's variations, 42% Yorkers at this stage of the innings. It's a very, very high percentage and it's usually very well executed. But there's also a high risk. If you miss that type of delivery, you can easily disappear straight back over your head. Good again. He uses that field again. Might point out the fact that there's no one at deep extra cover. It's just a deep point and long off. And Smith was trying to get it through extra cover. Hit it straighter. Now for Hetmeyer, what's Mukesh got? He's got a deep point here as well. 
Yeah, just to the right of your screen, you see the top right of your screen, that deep point in addition to long off. So there's no deep extra cover. So he's giving himself the option, one, to go wide and full, whether pace on or pace off, and then also to keep it straight with three fielders protecting the onside boundary. Oh, let it through. Yashas Vijay Swal got a hand on it and will feel that he should have stopped it. Mukesh is not pleased. But it's welcome runs for the West Indies and Hetmeyer. Yeah, just perhaps missed his length. It ended up being a low full toss before Hetmeyer. Just want to have a look at the boundary check. Does it roll on to make contact? Yes, it does. So it is confirmed to be a four. Just wonder if that changes where he'll go next. Does he go off stump? Does he continue straight? Really huffing and puffing. He's down on his haunches a lot after that boundary two balls ago because it's very hot. Look at the t-shirt stuck onto his body. That's another thing the fielders have to contend with and West Indies will too. With just eight runs in this over. It's a good one given the state of the game. Can he close it off? Mukesh Kumar. Bowling three overs in his spell this time around as compared to two previously. Very good change of length. No wide given to Odin. He wants it to be one for height. One six one for seven. One over remaining in this contest. Highest score of the series posted so far. Ash deep to deliver it. There's a short third and a deep backward point. With the wind, and that'll clear the boundary easily. That's the area that Hetmeyer's targeting and where you don't want as a bowler for him to hit it with the wind. And surely that shot would result in some changes, either in his line or in the field. And this is essentially in the slot. You don't want to be tram line, bowling the final over from this end to the left-hander. With a well-set left-hander, so it's an exceptional start to the over for the West Indies. Just gone over what the pass score is, batting first tier, aiming for more. Tilak says, yes, I've got it. That's his view. But the most important men will be consulting now the two standing officials. Both Barbadian, Leslie Reefer Jr. and Gregory Brathwaite, and they send it to the television umpire. TV umpire to director, I have a review for a fear catch. 
It's a free delivery. I've checked the front foot already. Could you give, you, give me your best angle, please? Ball is now in the palm of the hands, fingers are beneath. I'm satisfied. My decision for the big screen is up. Yeah, confirmation that it is in fact out. A really good catch from Tilak Varma. He knew it immediately. He just needed some confirmation. High score in the series so far from Shemron Hetmaya, 61 West Indies, 167 for eight. Akil Hussain played well to help the West Indies in that game early in the series. Good change of length from Ashdeep again. You could have thought he might have gone wide Yorker. No. When knuckleball, I think, into the pitch. Yeah, change of pace, change of length. Confirmation that it is, in fact, a knuckleball to get that wicket. Really smart, really skillful. Hardik Pandya just stood. He did not move at mid-off. That's a good shot from Akil Hussain. The attempted Yorker, but with mid-off in place. I almost thought that there was someone behind Hardik Pandya. He didn't move at all. A good result for Akil Hussain. Gets off the mark with a boundary. A good result for the West Indies. That's past 170. Three deliveries remaining. Changing the field now. Long off has been pushed back from mid off to long off in Shubman Gill, who needs bottom right of his screen some runs in this series. And right to him. It's a much better feel if you're going to go off stump Yorker. Gill needs to fire. He's too good a player. He's had a, a very good 12 months in the game. But in this T20 series, has struggled. And that will happen to young players. When you're new and young in the game, you'll have little fluctuations. But his team could do with a score from him. 170 has never been successfully chased on this ground in the history of T20 internationals here. Highest successful chase is 95. Very good again from Ashdeep Singh. Now, whatever happens here, you've got to run. If you don't make contact, if you're the two batters, you've got to run. Knuckleball again. Yeah, he's played quite a few strokes in this inning so far. Odin Smith, 11 deliveries for just nine runs. Not the type of return that he would have hoped for or the West Indies. Can he make contact in this last one? Is he going slower ball again or Yorker pace on? Good final over. Well, no need to run because he's hit that all the way for six, right in the slot. And Odin flexing his muscle. Here in Florida. Finally. The West Indies will be hoping that this type of stroke gives them the confidence going into their bowling effort. And remember, nothing of this size has been successfully chased so far in T20 internationals on this ground. 
The West Indies finish on 178 for eight of their 20 overs. Leave the series 2-1. Yeah, 57 in the last five is what India conceded. Rashid was good generally throughout that innings. The spinners, all three of them, completing their allocation of four. Kulip Yadav with a double strike in his first over, again showing his worth and showing what he can do. His consistency throughout this tournament has been phenomenal. In confirmation then of the West Indies and their batting effort, winning the toss and deciding to bat first. A good start from Kalmir, 17 from 7. She hope was good, 45 from 29. His first game of the series, but Hetmeyer with 61. Top scoring of just 39 deliveries. West Indies, 178 for 8. Ashley finished with three for 38, struck the six off that last ball. That'll hurt him just a little bit, but Kuldeep outstanding again. Two for 26, a wicket for Mukesh Kumar, who bowled tough overs. And Aksa, one for 39, used to start proceedings off with the ball. A wicket for Yusvindra Chahel, and a cost of 36. Time some of our commentators got out into the heat and did some hard work. Rana Kapoor, his boundary side. I've got Shay Hope with me. Shay, let's talk about the end of the innings. A couple of big blows, good innings from Shimran Hetmai, 178 after being 57 for four. Thoughts on that score? Yeah, I, I thought we started well. Um, something that we speak about always in the meetings. Um, but yeah, we. we, we we, 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 did a, uh, we didn't do ourselves justice in the middle, but um, great innings from Hetty to finish off a, a decent enough score. I thought it was still about 10, maybe 15 runs short, but still happy with the total. Your return to the T20i side and you had wickets falling around you. Take me through the early period of play towards the end of the power play. How challenging was it playing the wrist spinners? Yeah, well, the aim is always put the attack to bowlers. Um, we, we speak about being positive. The mindset is always to be positive. But yeah, we lost a few wickets in the middle, so the aim was just to glue things back a bit. And then Hetty came in and made things a bit easier for myself. So uh, that part today was crucial. And again, great innings by Hetty to, to give us a, a shouting chance today. Your own score of 45 of 29, you're back in the T20i side, going at a good strike rate. How much does this innings mean to you? It means a lot. Again, I was just waiting for my opportunity. Something that I always wanted to play, I always want to play all three formats and to get the opportunity today and hopefully I can, that those 45 runs could be contributor to a win. 2-1 up in the series, great chance to secure it today. Do you think you've got enough? Ah, well, you always think we have enough, but we, we'll see, time shall tell. Well played today, Shay, and good luck for the second innings. Thank you very much. Good to hear from Shea Hope talking to Rana Kapoor. Well, India will need the high successful run chase on this ground if they are to keep the series alive. 179 required at a rate just under nine in the sunshine. Lovely conditions here in Florida. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with much more.
Welcome back to this fourth T20I West Indies won the toss and he decided to bat first useful contributions from Shea Hope first game for him in the series and Sherman Admire uh, welcome return to form 61 he got uh, started off a little bit slowly but once he got going he showed what he can do and what we've come to expect from him three fours and four sixes in that innings, a couple of good partnerships along the way. Darren Ganga alongside me looking at this wagon wheel. How impressed have you been with him? A return to form, you would say, his highest score of the series. Hetmeyer played to his strengths, hit wide of long on when he looked for boundaries. He was watchful against the spinners. And the West Indies didn't really absorb too many dots, only 38 in the innings. Loves to rotate strike, Hetmeyer, and he did exactly that. The bowlers for India, their four, their three spinners rather, and picking up wickets again. And Kuldeep, and two for 26. The leading wicket taker now in the series with six strikes. Chahal was a little bit expensive, but those wickets, along with the one of Aksa, is so crucial in any T20 game. Mukesh picked up one himself. West Indies 178 for it. Just about set for the run chase india need 179 runs to keep this series alive remember west indies lead the five match series two to one and potentially an opportunity to close the series off shasby jaiswal just getting his eyes in as he gets another opportunity at the top of the innings Darren Sammy just having a quick chat with his bowlers and perhaps solidifying plans, having seen the first innings and what the pitch has to offer. Jason Holder is making a return after having missed game three. As a precautionary measure, didn't contribute with the bat. Will have a job, no doubt, to do with the ball. Nicholas Puran will be the man behind the stumps, she hope in the outfield. Looking to see how best they can win consecutive T20 International Series for the first time since 2017. They won their last series against South Africa recently. Darren Ganga, what do you make of this score and what's key in defending it? Historically, Average person in score 165, so 178 above par. It's a surface that will dry further because of the midday heat. So it will get a little bit slower. Western is, uh, will know that they only have the services of one specialist spinner in that of Akil Hussein. 
It's a seam dominated attack. It will be important for them to use the conditions. Darren Sami will be happy with this uh, first innings effort. Of course, Rockman Paul winning the toss, electing to bat first. Making good use of batting friendly conditions, you would say. And after having a good solid power play start with the bat, they stumbled a bit. Stumbled to the point where they lost three wickets for just three runs. Within the space of eight balls. So it was really good to see Hetmeyer put his hand up and finish the innings in style. Their best last five overs with the bat in the series achieved by the West Indies. Yeah, both teams make their way out in representation from the batting team in the form of Jaiswal and Shubman Gill. Very good strike rate, but not a good productivity of runs from him so far. He'll be looking to make amends. Such a classy player, such a quality player. Shazvi Jaiswal made his debut in the last game, got dismissed. In the very first over, the fourth delivery, trying to take one. Obed McCoy perished. Has really good numbers generally in T20 cricket. Chasing again on a good surface. It'll be interesting to see his approach this time around. If he goes in an aggressive way as he did last time. And I'll be faced with the prospect of Obed McCoy again who is the leading wicket-taker for the West Indies in T20Is against India. And has a good record against them. Match ball presented by Pasham Global. West Indies with just Aki Lusin as the specialist spin bowling option. Expect the fast bowlers in their ranks to utilize the slower deliveries. Also seeing this partnership, Cricket West Indies and IB Cup. Log on to the website for more information with regard to illegal streaming. Very hot and steamy day out in the middle. We'll challenge everyone. First ball off the chase. Starts with a boundary. A bit of wit offered. And he starts aggressively, so that answers a few questions immediately. Jaiswal is one of those T20 players that will go hard straight away. You think of players like Tilak Varma, Surya Kumar Yadav, Nicholas Puran. He is of similar ilk. Doesn't waste a lot of deliveries early in his innings. He's created a niche for himself with his style of play. That approach, of course, it's high risk. I registered the fastest ever half century in the IPL in the 2023 season. Of just 13 deliveries. That game played in Kolkata against the Knight Riders. Really breathtaking innings from him. Everyone who came his way were dispatched. Looking to replicate that type of performance at the international level. It's not the same, much different. Once two, gets to excellent running. A few things uh, Rovman Paul and the West Indies will take note of. The pace of the ball from the surface, we spoke about this uh, surface being relatively dry. Hot time of the year here in Florida. So he will use that information to inform whether or not he uses Akil Hussein in the power play phase of the innings. There's a bounce from McCoy. 
tall man. Good length and good line as well. Surprises Jaiswal. It'll be very interesting, as you mentioned, Darren, to see whether he goes with Akil Hussein or if he thinks that he will get much more out of him during the middle phase of the innings. When you reflect on what transpired in the first half of this game, two quick wickets going to Ashdeep Singh. Spin. Providing the breakthrough for India. One of the three changes for the West Indies, Odin Smith into the West Indian side. So that's an option that Rothman Paul will use. Smashed. This is what Jaiswal can do. And this is the reason why he's making an appearance at the international level. Expensive start, 10 without loss. Good start, good positive start. Lots of intent from Yashasvi Jaiswal. Last ball of that Obed McCoy over, missing his length. Too full on this surface. And duly dispatched. Not much time to look at proceedings. He's into his work early, Jaiswal. Akil Hussein will be the one entrusted for the second over. Has a slip in position. Two is the call, and two it is. Gill off the mark. Akil Hussein partnering Obed McCoy. Rothman Paul will rely on him to produce early wickets in this phase of the innings. He's a smart bowler, guyful in his approach. I also feel when you look at this West Indian 11 and this West Indian squad, it's lacking another specialist spinner to exploit conditions like this one here. Surely there is a, a need for another specialist spinner. Gudakish Moti has shown his worth in ODI cricket. That's an option. Kevin Sinclair was also a part of that ODI team as a right arm off spinner. Having two specialist spinners as an option for drying conditions, slow conditions, is a real asset for a captain. Powell has to manage Hussein. No. When you just have four overs available to you from a variety you think that will have a significant impact in a game and in a series, it makes it so difficult. Reverse, well fielded. Good work from Odin Smith. It makes it so challenging for the captain. If he burns an over or two in the power play, then there is only so many left. Look at this effort. This is what they'll need. The energy, the intensity in the field all the way through. They tried Rustan Chase in game three as a second spinner in the absence of Jason Holder. It was decent, if not spectacular. None for 28 from his four. Deep midwicket, deep backward square. No long on. Good length, really good length to finish that over from Akil Hussein. Good start from him. 
tidy 16 without loss. Players in that batting lineup that can single handedly win a game with the bat. Very strong middle order. Sky in form. Varma, the leading run scorer in the tournament. Will it be Jason Holder to replace McCoy? Fleet away through the offside, gets himself a boundary. One Rajasthan Royal to another. Welcome to the bowling lineup. And straight away putting pressure on Jason Holder, who missed the last game due to a knee injury. Bowled extremely well in the first T20 International back at the Brown Lara Cricket Academy. And he picked up two for 19 in his four overs. A similar approach required on the surface. Pace off the ball primarily will be the way to go. Just a slight adjustment across the left-hander. Has the short third point on the boundary. Just sort of a stand and deliver type player in the first phase of a T20 innings. Very clear in what he wants to do and his approach, Jaiswal. Made his debut in the test match format in the first test in Dominica. A masterful innings from him. Didn't feature in the ODIs. Debuted a couple games ago in the T20 International. What a tour he's having in terms of getting a taste of international cricket. India in preparation for this very important game would reflect on what they achieved in the power play in the last game. A solid 60 for two. They went to 10 runs per over and generally they lose two wickets in this first power play. That's an important part of the success of their collective batting in T20 internationals. Scoring high in the power play. In the air, but in the gap. Magnificent strike from Jaiswal. And they're jubilant. And it's a surface that you could afford to hit the ball on the up. Just stand and deliver. Use the pace. Use the hardness of the new ball. And with his skill set, that's a terrific stroke. This is further pressure now on Jason Holder. Eight from the over. Three boundaries and over. That was the best of the lot. Really elegant and sublime from Jaiswal. 28 without loss. A hat trick of fours in that Jason Holder over. Jaiswal just fleeing him through the offside. This one was an absolute treat. Off to a healthy start, 24 from 15. Gill just the three deliveries. Making things look quite easy at the moment. McCoy switches ends, replaces Aki Lusin.
West Indian fast bowlers uh, will have to extract significant bounce from the surface to use that for wicket taking. We've seen that over this multi-format tour that you get a little extra bounce, you put a little more pressure on the Indian batters. Odin Smith is one such bowler who can do that. Yeah, deep mid wicket, deep backward square. So expect the length to be short. And the line to be straight. And just like that, that's the region where he has protection. And it's a skiddy bounce from the surface. So you've got to bang the ball way shorter to get it high. In that vulnerable band to a batter. Just about shoulder height, head height. Maybe use the variations as well, the cross seam, to get that extra bounce. Margin for error on this surface, so narrow for a fast bowler. You know, Shubhan Gill has that short arm jab that he plays to perfection. And there you talk about that extra bounce. That's exactly what he's getting, McCoy. Hitting high on the bat, not allowing him to play that semi-cross batted shot that he plays. Hits the seam. Yeah, just surprising him a bit. And it's a great ploy used by opposition teams when playing against subcontinental teams. Extract, extra bounce. At the same time, it has to be selective. Shubman Gill surely would feel the pressure of not scoring prolifically throughout the course of this tour. There will be that expectation from the fans, from everyone. That's because of his obvious talent as a batter. Yeah, there's some need for assistance out in the middle of Powell. Might just be going off the field and this was the ball that went towards him at mid on perhaps splitting the webbing or something of the sort and so he's going off Kyle Mears is the Vice captain of this team, so he'll be taking charge. Johnson Charles on the field for Rothman Powell. Yeah, that's a shot. He's so good at that shot. It's not a full blooded pull, it's a short arm jab that he plays with a plum. And it doesn't get high enough to trouble Shipman Gill. Just has a way of finding a base and hitting through the line. Not totally a horizontal bat stroke, but good enough to go all the way for six. That's a fabulous stroke. You have to be so careful with your length because of that shot. Plays it with assurance and confidence. Quick single, direct it needed. Good response, good running. 37 without loss. One forty two from ninety six is what's needed. Oh, 
There, Mario Shepard. Into the attack, good running. Highest opening partnership of the series so far for India. Remember, they need to win to keep this series alive. And also, no team that has ever been 2 0 down in a five match T20I series has ever come back to win that series. Lots of support for them, even though it's meant to be a West Indian home game. Seems as though it's an Indian home game. And they've interspersed the boundary hitting well with the running between the wickets and the rotation of strike. Shepard usually prefers wrong the wicket to the left handers. Has had good success with that angle. Looking to cramp the left handers. He's over the wicket though. Most bowlers in this uh, first phase of the innings, they try to contain boundary scoring. Oftentimes they use that element of surprise for wicket taking. Mario Shepard uh, has an action that really doesn't come from right up top. Has that sideways release at times. And to that slow delivery which we'll continue to see more regularly throughout the course of this innings from the West Indian fast bowlers. Yeah, the young brigade from the Indians throughout this multi-format tour have stood tall, have made their presence count. Tilak Varma, quite exceptional in the T20 eyes. Just pure elegance from Jaiswal. Down the track. And the ease at which he plays this shot is something to behold. The timing of his movement is so special. Upon release, he gives himself room to hit through the offside. It's not a bad delivery, but he makes it a half volley with that movement towards the bowler. When you talk about being proactive as a batter in T20 international cricket, that's a fine example of it. And that's the 50 up for India. Magnificent partnership. A wonderful strike again from Yashasvi Jaiswal. He's raced to 34. Five gone, 50 without loss. Partnership that has the promise of a lot of runs. What is uh, looking like a bright future for Yashasvi Jaiswal and Shubman Gill. He's got shots all around the ground. He's an absolute beast mode during the IPL. Back of a low score on debut. Previous T20I. Jaiswal looks ominous as India Surge towards uh, an improbable or difficult chase at this ground. 179 Odin Smith's first introduction in this series. It's a good start. We've got a game on, Ian Bishop. Hello, Ronak. Hello, everyone. 
Batting looks good at the moment. He's picked the slow ball. He's got height. He's got distance. Very good from Gill. A very, very slow, slow ball. You can see Shubman Gill reset in order to be able to generate that power and pick it well. Mentioned his lean run in the series. He needs, he needs, and India needs him to contribute in this game. Just welcome Dodin Smith into the attack. Smith making the move to the Gujarat Titans. Would have been some familiarity, didn't feature for Hardik Pandya's side in a dramatic effort to win back-to-back -back titles in this year's IPL. Of course, Odin Smith uh, gifted the Gujarat Titans an improbable win last season in bowling for Punjab. Gets away with that final over of the power play this, so it's an important over for Odin Smith in the West Indies. Yeah, go back to that first ball. I was just walking past the ball, tracking guys at the start of Jason Holder's over where I think he might have started with something slightly slow as well. And, and they were wondering about the wisdom of starting your spell so early in the game with a pace off. You know, there are some who are pro it, some anti it. That is pace on. So what worked for Arshdeep Singh with the new ball. You're very lucky to get away with that because there's a short third. So enough bat on it and it would have been uppercut. And that's what Gil was trying to do over Akilo saying a short third for at least a boundary. There's a deep backward point for the use of the pace square. Picked up from Gil, fielder just over him. Second six of the over. For a moment, Johnson Charles, who's on the field, for Ruffman Powell, came tracking in. He ran in a couple of steps and then started backpedaling. But remember that hit with the wind down there. Smith is that he's got a career economy rate I would think 10 or over so as he continues to try to develop both him and Shepard have that challenge ahead of them with the ball yeah back in uh, T20 I playing 11 after the series in South Africa didn't play in the qualifiers played in the bilateral series against the UAE before that offside and yet another boundary for Gill. It's a powerful way to finish the power play. 16 off the over, India on the chart. 66 without loss. Power play complete. Yeah, a couple of pretty ordinary deliveries from Odin Smith in that first over. That was the last of them. And India are 11 runs ahead of where the West Indies were at a similar stage at the conclusion of the power play, those first six. Yeah, most prolific power play for India and in the years, Patrick Noon points out that uh, 66 without loss usually struggled. 
opening partnership. He has hold after the power play. Two very talented young players, still young, of course, Jai Swal. Early in his T20 career, just a couple of matches in and showing great aggression, showed his solidity in the Test Series. And then Gil, after a lean start to this T20i Series, at least for the moment, showing great composure and skill in the power play, taking on Odin Smith. Yeah, it's a joint account that promises plenty of balance. The runs column, Jaiswal and Gill live up to the promise of their potential. Help yourself, Shubman. Thank you very much. Nine fours and three sixes now in the innings for the West Indies. And just imagine, not imagine is a fact, they were into the seventh over. And already nine fours and three sixes. More than a boundary and over. As hard as power plays are. And into the seventh over. That's uh, too profligate. Oh, no. No, no, no. Kyle. I know you name-checked our analyst just now, which is very rare for him to name-check our analyst, but he says West Indies only hit nine fours in the entire innings. Never name-checking. You just don't hear the end of it, Patrick Noon. Might as well blame someone. And this is the kind of start India need. Challenges of uh, the depth of their batting. Top order has to carry most of the workload. Highest score chasing at this ground is 96 successfully. India managed 244 and fell short the first time they played here in uh, Lauder Hill, Florida back in 2016. Evan Lewis and Kale Rahul matched hundreds. Thrilling game. 489 runs scored. But otherwise, it's been a batting first sort of ground. So India have their work cut out. Looking good at the moment, though. Yeah, and the point you make there is at the moment, right? So that could be subject to change. The West Indies will need to take wickets. I was talking to the groundsman when we were here two days ago, and he, he talked about the soil that they use here comes from Mississippi. It's a dark soil. It, it binds reasonably well, and, and one of the older groundsmen who was here in the previous years starting the T20 Internationals here talks about a facility in Atlanta, Georgia, where it's even quicker and bouncier. Come back to it. 75 without loss. To back games at the Broward County Stadium. Close out this tour. West Indies eaten in the tests and the ODIs. 2 1 up. As we get a further idea of challenge of scoring runs, understanding the surface that will host consecutive T20 games. Not for the first time, Akil Hussain returns. And yeah, Bish, you were talking about the merits of this surface, how it's come together. There's a uh, groundsman in the blue shirt and there's one previous to him who comes in and consults. And I remember some of the games in the early years used to be very low scoring. But the Mississippi soil, the soil from Mississippi seems to bind a little bit better than some of those early years. Akil Hussain will be hoping that it grips 
But cricket in North America is taking off in a big way now. So a lot of new stadia are being constructed across the country as vast as it is. Yeah, co-hosts at uh, the ICC Men's T20 World Cup next year, United States. So good crowds for the inaugural season of Major League Cricket. Which Nicholas Puran lit up with the century in the final. This one here is, is intimate. I'm not telling them how to construct or to be architects, but it'll be nice if the spectators, if you have day games, it's brutally hot, could have some shade from some roofing protection. But for Akilo saying here, he needs to... West Indies need a wicket, so can you get it by building pressure? Or the other option that some teams have, if you had, and what West Indies are looking for, Ronak, is a, a cool, deep, tight wrist spinner, whether right arm or left arm, who is able to prize out a wicket, as Sunil Narayan did for so many years for the West Indies, by their sheer mystery and trickery. The finger spinner can do it by creating pressure. But it's harder. Yeah, and we talk about how much India have to learn about their players, about these conditions ahead of the World Cup. West Indies too. Sunil Narayan was such a big part of their T20 ah. World Cup success. So was Samuel Badri. Oh. Gurukesh Moti caused problems to India's batters. It's a left-arm orthodox option. Yannick Carrier was good too, not part of the T20 squad. So that's something they will learn. Do they need more spin with that home World Cup? And, 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 and it's a type of spin because what Battery is very good at was bowling that new ball, bowling wicket to wicket. And then you'd have Sunil Narayan who would be able to come in in the middle overs, as West Indies very well know, and go each way at pace. So you couldn't just sit on him and defend. And he was all the more better when there were runs, scoreboard pressure, I should say. And you had to go at him. So that's the type of additional spinner I think the West Indies need. Someone who can prize out a batter in the middle overs, not on call because it doesn't, it's not that simple, but at least has a better chance. It's also the season to return to international cricket. Who knows? Samuel Badri sitting at the back of the box. Get some shot here. Been running all over Zimbabwe. That's a good shot. Gill and Jaiswal going along seamlessly here, 84 without loss. serious gap being uh, created now. This is where the West Indies lost their way, but a partnership between Shea Hope and Shimron Hetmeyer helped them rebuild. Uh, last ball of uh, the previous over. Shubman Gill took us by surprise. Thought he just nudged one for two. He does that. He's got the gift of the game with shots that are his USP, which only he manages to get for more than two or three and Gets boundaries. Shepard. Oh, slight mix up. That Jeswal putting the full length dive. Now, as a result, he's taken the overthrow. I have some reactions from the West Indies fielders. Could it look like it throw went of the ricochet of the bat? I think it would have been one anyway, even if it hadn't hit the bat. Yeah, it's not like it's gone for four and changed the fate of the World Cup. Oh, don't go there. Yeah. 
think, Ranoff, just from a West Indies perspective, the other thing you need uh, in the absence, and there'll be time to find that spinner or something close to it, is extra pace. As Ari Joseph rested today, I have no problem with that. I was checking with our analyst who was name-checked, and he told me that he's played over 150 days of cricket, competitive cricket, since last year. That's a lot of cricket, and you don't want him burning out. He's an all-format cricketer, in a, including playing franchise tournaments. O'Shane Thomas is still with the group, working hard. Jeswalt slashes and slashes hard, gets it over the infield. That's four more. This is so good from Jaiswal, who's striking at 161, Gill at 176. Robin Powell is at long off, and I saw him throw his head in the air when that shot was hit. Whether it's deliberately over there, runs leaking now, 11 fours and three sixes. Somebody needs to create some pressure. Some peer. Yeah, it's easy at the moment. Just the platform India would have wanted. I see you are quite keen to go back to me name-checking our analyst, Vish. It seems to have really hit a nerve with you. And the thing is, for us mere mortals, we need to keep mentioning our name in order to remember it. We won't have great moments where the world is told to remember our name. Could have been two, could have been two, should have been two. Glad we moved on from that conversation. Now, I like to give credit to people on our broadcast because they work hard. And as I got to Ghana, some of the guys who do the running around for us do the hard task in the sun said, you credit all the guys and the camera positions and you don't say anything about us. And then the VT guys were jumping in. When am I getting name checked as well? So to all the crew who bring you these fantastic pictures, very well done. Yeah, Bish will be publishing an image with everyone's name on a printout on his Twitter account. 93 without loss. Well, 86 from 66, it looks like India well and truly in control. But in this series, we have seen strange things happen, even with the asking rate presumably under control with wickets in hand. Kilo Sen to continue. And batting to come, Tilak Varma, who's been so consistent in this series. In fact, talk floating around India now about him getting into the 50-over squad. Surya Kumar Yadav, who was outstanding with his half-century last game. Then Hardik himself, Samson, we haven't seen enough of him. Or as much as he would have liked in this T20i series. So, with this run rate required... They're in control of things, provided they don't do anything silly or someone bowls a magic spell. And you could see the measured approach from Shubman Gill without it compromising on a strike rate. He's going at 170. It's just minimizing dot balls. Better judgment in terms of where he wants his boundaries. He's played a few shots that he'd be disappointed with in previous T20 eyes.
yeah, we saw the short arm pull again today. Something has become his hallmark. And he's more effective, I think, with it when pitches are not pacey. In Guyana, Alzari Joseph rushed him, and it's one of the few times you saw him dismissed by it. But these conditions here, I wonder if these are more amenable. I'm wondering, and the end result will tell us. For the West Indies, whether a maybe an, a Kyle Mears over might be something. Venture to save even Rothman Powell and over for himself, which we saw last game at the end. Might be something they can go to. Multiple runs. Oh. Game in slow motion. This is Romario Shepard. Decent effort for a high jump. Last ball. Oh. As it turns out, it's three. Hey. Umpires may last, last ball. have a look at that. Oh. It looks good from that angle. We may need a, a little bit more clarification. But what happened post that with Romario hurdling the advertising hoardings was equally as impressive. As long as he did not hurt himself. Three then. Relatively quiet over, but it's still seven off it. 100 comes up for India, 100 of the partnership for the first time between Jaiswal and Gill at the international level. It's a terrific start for India. They've earned a Blue Waters drinks break. Welcome back to coverage of this third four T twenty I in beautiful part of the world. Florida so much to do. The sun and sea and sand. If you have an opportunity to come down, please avail yourselves. Wonderful sunshine. Wonderful shopping opportunities. Lots of malls, nightlife. Whatever you're after, it's here. Also here in West Indies and India for this fourth T20I Jaiswal unbeaten on 47 in his second T20I Gill 49. This partnership 100. Bowling for the West Indies. Smith, expensive one over 16. Everyone so far. Hussein has been a little bit on the expensive side. This is where we stand 
West Indies winning the toss and deciding to bat first 178 for eight. India in reply in a very, very good position. 100 without loss. All 10 wickets in hand to get 79. of young fans, old fans, men, women. It's so good to see the appeal that the sport has in these parts and people coming in from all over the world to support their respective teams. Stands packed. And they've been treated with some good cricket as well. And particularly if you're an Indian supporter, you'd be very pleased with what this young man has done trying to transition into international cricket Shubman Gill has been short of runs missing his captain had to leave the field a little bit earlier and got a blow to his hand he's back on with the ball in his hand looking to break this partnership alongside me Shakira Selman this has been exceptional from India so far. Yeah, these two batteries have been impressive and they want to carry on. They'll firstly be aiming to get those landmarks. Jaiswal only into his second T20 international. But he's made a statement. And Shaman Gill, Lean Patch. In the T20s, but he's on to 49. Dapa! Brendan! Akia! Michelle, go! Kingy! Half century for Shubman Gill. Again, his prowess through that offside. And that backward point region, such good timing. Good work from Hitmeyer in the deep. And last time he got past 50, Shubman Gill, he scored a century. So this would be the first time that he scores a half century in T20Is. Potentially, he can go on to get another century. And just confirmation of the work in the deep from Hetmeyer. That looks good. Good feeling. And there's first 100 plus opening partnership since September 2022. When Kohli and KL Rahul put on 119 against Afghanistan. Very dominant through the leg side today. In front of square, Shubman Gill. Seeing his pickup shot, his semi pull, which he plays so well, a number of times throughout this innings. Single brings Jai's wall on straight, just two runs away from a maiden to 20 half century. Well, well, well. Ruffman Powell bowling gentle medium pace, oversteps the line, results in a free hit on a man who's on 48. On the cusp of his first T20 international half century. Jaiswal has already scored a century in Test match cricket. Exceptional start to his international career, and he's been given a gift. What does he have in terms of his field placing? Point on the boundary, extra cover on the boundary, long off, looking to go wide. Walks across, gets the gap. Half century for Shubman Gill. Only his second T20I. 
Jaiswal, this man is certainly one for the future. Applause from the coaches and his teammates. But what a way to bring up his first T20 international half century. He's made his mark on this tour. Jubilation for the youngster. Yeah, making things look quite easy out in the middle of these two. And just 70 from 56, 69 from 55 now. All 10 wickets intact. Both opening batters getting half century. What a tour he's had. First international tour with the senior team. And he's making it memorable. Another gift resulting in two from Rothman Powell. Expensive over so far. 12 from it with a delivery left. Your thoughts on the decision to bowl himself at this stage? You can understand why he's brought himself into the attack. They haven't been able to break this partnership. And if West Indies are going to win this game, they need a wicket. He obviously is without the surfaces, services of Rost and Chase. They had two spinners in the previous game. So just Akil Hossein available as a spinner in this game. So he is trying every option and trying to take a wicket. It's the end of a very expensive over. India 113 without loss. Very much in command of this fourth T20I India. An opportunity to level the series. And all to play for tomorrow at this same venue. Akil Hussein for his final over. And now that he's gone past 50, Jaiswal, expect him to be a lot more aggressive. He's saying more aggressive, but he's 55 from just 36 deliveries. Striking out just over 150, Jaiswal. Last APL, he was striking at 164. And they've run well between the wickets to complement the boundary hitting. Showing that they can find the gaps and rotate strike. Such an important element in any format. Yeah, you just think. Rothman Powell really has some decisions to make. He went for 13 in that over. He also has Calmeiros at his disposal. But you almost think West Indies would probably be regretting not having a second spinner in this team. Just a single. A bit of innovation from Shubman Gill.
And they have been quite formidable at this venue. Difficult to beat. Westinese have struggled here. It's been a good over from Akilusin, a good spell once again, quite miserly, not amongst the wickets, but just 25 from 3.5. When you look at the score, 117 without loss in 12, that represents an excellent effort. Can he close it off against a rampaging Jaiswal? Reverse. He goes all the way for six. He can't close the over off. Jaiswal is in a dominant mood. 12 gone, 123 without loss. Have a look at this shot of the last delivery of Akilusin. Premeditated, but played to perfection. Got a lot of it hitting with the wind. There was a fielder in the deep, but nowhere close. Now that is quite a shot from Jaiswal. So confident in his ability. Expensive first over from Odin Smith, reintroduced into the attack in his first game of the series. Zari Joseph being managed in terms of workload. Westinese are desperate for a wicket to get maybe a sneak back in this contest. At the moment, it's all in there. Picked up. Expensive start, so the carnage continues here at Broad County. Yeah, it's Shaman Gill's fourth maximum of his inning so far. He continues to pepper that leg side boundary. Odin Smith just drifting outside of leg, and it's an easy flick off the legs. No chance for that man, Aki Hussein, at the fine leg. Yeah, that shot almost looked like Surya Kumar Yadav playing it. Very much like that region. One, two. Just one. Under 50 now needed. Fielders out on the leg side boundary for the left handed Jais Wall. So you would expect Odin Smith to try to bowl at the stumps, which is quite risky as it means Jais Wall will be hitting into the wind with the wind. Forgive me. Yeah, lots of changes in the field. Point goes back in the boundary, so there's a sweeper on the offside, backward point, and long off. Fine leg and square leg in the circle. Yeah, his second T20I started off with his very first delivery being fleed for four. And that first over looked quite dominant. Very strong through the offside, gives himself room. Quick single. Without his bat. Still able to complete it safely. The 
Let's have a look at where he scored his runs today. His strength through the offside. Very much evident. Also good backward of point. And that six was a reverse or switch hit. And it continues to impress. Shows his ability to play the situation as was the case today. Huge shot from Odin Smith given. Finger goes up. Shubman Gill reviews it immediately. TV umpire to director. I have a player's review for LBW. The original decision is out. It's a fair delivery. I've checked the front foot already. Could you move on the front and speed vision, please? Front and coming up. Ball is very close to the bat. Can you assist me with ultra hedge, please? Ultra hedge coming up. It's a flat line, flat line, flat line. There's a gap between the bat and the ball. I'm satisfied. No bat was involved. As soon as ball tracking is available, could you move on, please? Ball tracking coming up. Pitching in line, impact in line, and wickets missing. Leslie, you'll have to change your original decision of out to not out and yeah, turn the screen. You are now overturned. Shipman Gill lives to fight another day. Partnership will continue. 131 without loss in there. Previous best in this series was just 16. Considerable difference and no bowler yet to get a wicket for the West. And he's still searching for their first wicket. The other opening batsman, Shubman Gill. We've seen this man for some time in international cricket and in the IPL. And so easy whenever he's batting, very aesthetically pleasing. Lots of composure at the crease, lots of time to play his shots. Always seems quite relaxed at the crease. Both batsmen have faced 39 deliveries. That's massive. From the time it left the bat, it was always going to be six. A wonderful way to end. Just like they started the over with a six. 13 gone, 138 without loss. Forty-one from forty-two. Last ball of that Odin Smith over dispatched. Hitting with the wind, the sound of the bat. You knew immediately. Short, and the type of mood that he's in, Jaiswal, is not going to miss out. Robert McCoy back into the attack. Shubangil immediately calls for two. Can't get it, wants the strike. Shakira Salman, what can 
Obed McCoy do? What can Ralph Mann Powell and the West Indies do at this stage? Well, we've seen that pace on continues to go. That last ball that was hit for six from Odin Smith was pace on. So you can't expect Oben McCoy to resort to his slower deliveries. What will be important, though, is the line that he bowls them. Sometimes those slower deliveries from McCoy are just too wide. He also saw some good Yorkers being bowled by Mukesh Kumar. So which West Indian bowler is confident to try those? And they are just requiring 39 runs from 40 deliveries. So they'll need a collapse of sorts to win this game. Looks like he's gone to the Yorker for that last delivery. But that's the defensive Yorker, not the one required at this point. A good execution from Obed McCoy. There'll be some familiarity between these two as well. McCoy plies his trade for the Rajasthan Royals. As does Yashas Jaiswal. Had just a one game in the 2023 season, Obed McCoy. Just feel though, Shakira, that the turning point in that game, in this game rather, was the double wicket strike from Kulip Yadav. Masinis were off to a decent start in terms of Run it. Edged away. Fortuitous from Jaiswal, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, you just have to feel for Obed McCoy. It's been a good over up to this point. And not where Jaiswal intended to hit it. But it results in another boundary with short third in the circle. Yeah, this has been a really dominating performance. Remember, this team was 2 0 down. One in Guyana in game three. And on course to win here. Another massive strike. Another six from Jaiswal. This guy's on fire. 150 comes up, 151 without loss after 14. Last ball of the previous over. Dispatch for six. Last ball of the over before that was dispatch for six. So dealing in sixes at the moment, these two. It's going to be Jason Holder back into the attack. These two overs have gone for 20 runs. Back into the team today after being arrested because of a niggle. And unfortunately for West Indies, he hasn't been able to make an impact with either bat or ball. In the gap. Calmias does well to limit them to just two. The fourth highest opening partnership in T20Is for India at the moment. 
Remember, this too will be the highest successful chase at this venue. Lots of records being demolished during the course of this multi-format tour. In the air, falls safely and very close to the boundary. Doesn't get there in the end. A bit of a misjudgment from Carl Mears, and you can see the dejection from Jason Holder as well. Was a little bit late going towards the ball, perhaps thinking that it would come to him. Miss hit, slower ball, and in the end, falling safely. Yeah, it was in the air for quite a while. And you would have expected Calmiris to be able to get to it. In the end, he had to dive forward. So perhaps he did move late. A good slow delivery by Jason Holder. And you would think on this pitch where the ball is sliding on, that we would have seen a lot more of these from the West Indian bowlers. Yeah, so mid-off in position now. A deep point. Expect him to go wide. Did dismiss Jaiswal in the test series. Bowling across him. Having brought mid off into the circle, he has to make sure it's very wide. Yeah, a couple of dots. Premeditating the line, Jai Swell moving across quite early, but not able to get the sort of connection that he is looking for. Yeah, good, good adjustment by Jason Holder as well, watching the batter and adjusting to him walking across. Change of field once more. Rob Mapawa comes a bit straighter, extra cover. The fielder sweeping on the offside goes square. Now perhaps expecting him to move again doesn't this time results in a wide. Both these young players would be thinking about getting their team over the line as Tilak Varma did when he was well set in game three. Long off in position now. The point comes into the circle. Just changing things up. Another slow ball, just one this time. I always wonder, Badri, when you're playing against a teammate, who really has the advantage? You know each other so well. So I'm always curious as to who is more likely to come out on top. Jason Holden and Jai Sowell obviously play their trade for Rajasthan Royals in the IPL. It's always an intriguing battle, isn't it? Good Yorker to end that over from Jason Holder. 22 needed from the last five. 157 without loss. West Indies started off brilliantly in this series, taking the first two games. India fought back well in the third at Providence in Guyana. And today, they are in even more dominant form. 
The West Indies bowling minus Alzari Joseph have not been able to stop the Jaiswal Gill train. And it will be even more of a patch on the arm if these two batters, and particularly someone like Jaiswal, can see it through to the end. Stamp of authority and class from Shubman Gill again. Five sixes so far in his effort. We've seen a quality that defies and defines greatness. That air of invincibility seen from Shubman Gill. He's done nothing wrong in this innings. So in control, so impressive to look at. A couple of runs. I think the other thing that I'm seeing, Darren Ganga, is that the surface here has not really slowed down a great deal, if at all. So I want to commend the ground staff because of the advantage we've seen here historically to teams batting first. This score, 165 without loss, suggests a surface that is good throughout and really was probably deserving of a 200 runs first innings. Taken safely. Shea Hope clutches onto it, and it's the end of Shipman Gill. What a wonderful partnership that has come to an end. Nice, smart catch. Shubman Gill goes for 77, and it's the joint highest opening partnership for India in T20Is. 165 for one. In the Caribbean, we'll say that youth, Tilak Varma, 20 years of age and has had an impressive start to his international career at senior level, replacing Gill. Was it the best of deliveries? We haven't seen the West Indians nail their Yorkers to perfection in this innings. Maybe about four or five of those deliveries were placed right, and it's an area that the West Indian bowlers will reflect on as they look towards that fifth and final T20 International. Very different in comparison to what we score from Mukesh Kumar in that first half. What does this guy have in store for us? Tilak Varma doesn't take a long time to get going. Just 14 from 27 required. thinking here as a young batter Ben you're coming in 27 26 deliveries 14 how, how switched on are you knowing that you can't get a big score yeah it must be switched on still because in different situations you might just have about 26 deliveries to make full use of it while you're batting so I would say don't change your intensity And for a guy like Tilak Barma, he has created a niche for himself in his style of playing T20Is. Gets going from ball number one, and he wouldn't want to change that approach. 
That has been an X factor element in this Indian batting lineup. Yeah, 100%. And, and, and I'll go back to the saying we had in the dressing room when we played don't waste good form. Because you, 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 take, you take it casual and you can never tell where it trickles off into bad form after a good run. Four closer. Four more runs closer to a series leveling win. Nine to get. 170 for one. So adept at using both the offside and the onside for run scoring. His awareness as to where the fielders are so significant in the way he goes about scoring runs. Oftentimes he finds that gap with ease. Yeah, I think it's justification too for Hardik Pandya because he believed he believed from the very start that the combination of his team was the one that he felt would work and there still be a decisive match to come. He just shifted personnel. He brought Jaisal in for Ishan Kishan. But his combination largely has stayed the same. So this will be some justification for that. Couldn't have said it better, Ian Bishop. What that sort of option has done for Hardik Pandya is given him two ways of winning a T20 international match. If his batting doesn't fire to its fullest potential, and he has that rare guard of six bowlers plus to win the game as well. So he's not having a bias in his selection trying to balance the strength of his team with batting and bowling. When you look at this Indian batting lineup, surely you'd expect the top six batters with the all-rounder in Aksa Patel to bat 20 overs and get an above par total. Or even in a run chase, to score at close to nines, tens, you expect that they can achieve that. They're shaping their model towards playing T20 international cricket, India and Hardik Pandya. Of course, that decisive match to come will confirm or deny and everything but the other thing he said and, and something i said to rana kapoor after the first game is that the batters have to take responsibility greater responsibility in a combination like this and since that third game the batters have taken responsibility sky to like barama jaiswal gill today can't shirk that responsibility will it go all the way it does go all the way so these fans who have come in here are seeing the continued fight back and resurgence of their representative team. Jason Holder searching for that Yorker. Went a little too far leg side. Allowed to like Varma to ease himself to a boundary. An inch closer to yet another victory for India. Must also underscore the high quality innings that we've seen from this young man, Jaiswal. 
I just love the way he celebrated his landmark. You can sense that there's a great deal of willpower in him demanding the best from himself. Then set the world on fire on debut in T20 internationals, but at the moment, he's playing a match-winning innings, Jaiswal. One seven seven for one. Surely a stronger statement here by India in this uh, fourth T Twenty International after being two down in the series. Western is at the halfway stage. Might have felt they had enough. But that opening partnership was so meaningful. India just two runs away from a series leveling win. It has given them a good glimpse of what Yashas Vijayswal can do. Ashdeep was very good in the power play today. Kuldeep continues to be excellent. West Indies now with this bowling lineup know how important Alzari is and how important it is to get a wrist spinner in. Go through for one and a wide signal as well. So that will be it as the ball dribbles down towards the boundary. And India have drawn level after the West Indies took the first two games. Hardik Pandya and his men have showed great resolve, great skill, commitment and character to win here by nine wickets. And Yashasvi Jaiswal, the win. The win has come on the back of a 21-year-old Jaiswal, a 23-year-old Gill, and the finishing touches by a 20-year-old Tilak Varma. 20-somethings doing it with the bat. And Ashdeep Singh and Kuldeep Yadav's bowling worked in the field. Compliments to the ground staff as well for putting up a good surface. And it's the first time that a score of this magnitude here in Florida in a T20 international has been successfully chased by a whopping, whopping nine wickets. Well played, Yashasvi. India continues its dominance here at the Central Broad Stadium in Florida. Fifth win for this team in T20 internationals against the West Indies. It's a fortress, you can say, but they've shown immense resolve and quality with their batting. West Indies uh, not sufficient enough with their target batting first. And this man continues to enhance his reputation as a talent and one that can dominate world cricket. All smiles, those at Rajasthan Royals, Raul Dravid and Vikram Rathor will be very pleased with what they've seen from Jai Swal. He failed in the previous match coming in for Ishan Kishan, but he showed us his test skill and now he's segued into this T20 team, equally competent. India's biggest win in terms of deliveries remaining over the West Indies in a T20 international. That's the future of Indian batting right there, Yashas Vijayswal, along with Varma. It was a tough ask at the halfway stage, but India started very, very well. That power play phase produced 66, and it was the jaiswal Gill partnership, a record joint partnership in T20Is for India that paved the way for this uh, successful run chase. Just a solitary wicket for Romario Shepard there. McCoy going at 11s, the same, the most economical, 7.75, but no wickets. Smith, expensive. And 
an expensive one from Powell. That's Denise Mr. Zari, and they continue to look to rebuild their bowling lineup. West Indies chose to bat first, and they lost six, four for 66 in the middle overs, 178 for eight. And India storming home by nine wickets. What's the most phenomenal moment of the day? MasterCard priceless moment. This was it. The very first ball that Kuldeep Yadav bowled today. He got the wicket of the informed oh. Nicholas Puran in the same over. He got the West Indies captain Ruffman Powell. West Indies two most prolific batters coming into the game. Gone in Kuldeep's first over. So we have the decider right here at Broward County Stadium tomorrow, the 50-20 International, 13th of August. It's all square, two each with one to play, all on the line tomorrow. All right, we'll just cool down here for a moment to the short break. When we come back, we'll hear from the captains. Welcome back to the Broad County Stadium where we've just come to the end of the fourth Cool Stylish Fans T20i powered by Black and White. India in a dominant mood. They go on to win by nine wickets. Had to chase 178 for eight. And it required the most successful run chase in T20i's at this venue. And guess what? India achieved it. Achieved it comfortably. 
both Jaiswal and Gill were superb at the top of the innings. Jaiswal first was dominant, remained unbeaten. And if you miss his effort, he was in fine touch, playing in only his second T20 International. 21 year old, showed maturity, showed proactiveness with his approach to batting, his range of strokes as well. So versatile, so invincible he was at the crease. First half century in T20 Internationals. And he was able to stitch together a record joint opening partnership for India in T20Is with Shubman Gill, his partner. Who came into form, had a tough time previously in this tour. And he produced a stylish innings of 77. Many of his runs coming through that onside. Playing that half pull to leg was the highlight of his innings. So as we come to the end of this game again, this win, second consecutive win by India means that the series is all squared. India winning today by nine wickets and tomorrow, the fifth and final T20I will take place right here at this venue. And we will have a winner of this T20 International Series. The entertainment has been high quality, good crowd on hand to witness uh, both teams in action. And they're on the rebound after losing the first two games of this series. Jaiswell and Gill didn't leave a lot for the others. Just one wicket to the West Indians. Romario Shepard late in the innings got that wicket, but it couldn't prevent India from going on to win by nine wickets. As we wait for the captains, we'll have a chance to speak with them. And to take us through that post-match presentation is Rana Kapoor. It's time for post-match honours here at the end of the fourth T20I of the School Stylish Fans T20 Series, West Indies versus India. 2023, powered by black and white, a game that India have won in emphatic fashion and leveled the five-match series 2-2. We'd like to firstly thank the official sponsors of the series who've made this possible. Title sponsor, Cool Stylish Fans, Black and White, Simpolo Tiles and Bathware, MYK Lady Crete, CG United, MasterCard, Dafabet, Blue Waters, and Visit Lauderdale. Thank you very much to all the sponsors. I'd like to just introduce the presentation party. Mr. Chris Prasad and Mr. Arvind Reddy from Worldwide Sports are with us. Thank you, gentlemen. As well as Mr. Rohit Nagpal, General Manager Marketing, MYK Leti Creed. And Mr. Nagpal will have uh, the first set of honors to do the player of the match. He's making uh, quite a name for himself at the international level. There were a number of other performances with bat and ball, but the panel of commentators have decided that today's player of the match is Yashasvi Jaiswal. 84 not out of 51 balls, 11 fours, three sixes. And Mr. Rohit Nagpal will present him with the player of the match award. Yashasvi, second format that you're playing for India on this tour, second player of the match award. Looks like international cricket is easy. Uh, of course, it's not easy, but I'm, I'm too happy to go out there and express myself. I would like to thank, you know, all the support staff and Hardy Bike that they have shown faith on me and the, the way they have spoken before the game, before the debut. I think that, that, that uh, shows so much impact in my mind and I think, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I'd love to ask you after trying a big shot in, on your debut game and getting out for a low score, you didn't try and get yourself to a score. What is your way of how T20 batting at the top of the order should be? I think I just try to play how team needs and how I can express myself through it, towards the plan. And I just think about that 
how quickly run I can get and how, how, how many shots I can play in the power play and put my team in a really nice shape. Then all, all my intent or in my mind, it's like how I'm going to play for team and, and of course reading the wicket and reading the situation, how it is and how I can take the game deep and when I need to attack. Everything is important, I guess, but my intent is always to score runs. Does it help having knowledge of playing Jason Holder, Obed McCoy in your Royals dugout? I think 100% means I have played a lot of balls. They have bowled me a lot of balls. Of course, it helps me to read them better, what they plan and what, what, what ball they can bowl to me. And I was ready. And yeah. Quite the opening partnership, 165 with you and Shubman. Do you like batting together? I think, I think wow, it was really, really amazing the way we were talking and the way we were taking singles and understanding each other how, when we can go for which bowler. And it was pretty amazing to bat him and he batted really well. And the way he was rotating the strike, that is, I, I think it's really important to build the partnership. And it was amazing, I guess, yeah. And did you enjoy the home support feeling you got from the uh, crowd here yes, at Lauderhill? Yes, 100%. I really want to thank everyone coming here and supporting us in this heat. And it was it was really a pleasure to express myself through to all over US and India and Indian supporters. Thank you so much. Well, I think they're going to be back here tomorrow. Well done, Yashasvi, and all the best for tomorrow as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yashasvi Jaiswal, player of the match. It is time now to invite Rovman Powell, captain of the West Indies, for a quick chat. Rovman, difficult second innings, but how did you feel about 178, given it's an above pass score at this ground? Um, I think it's a pretty good, good, good batting surface, you know, maybe we're 10, 15 run shot, you know. But having said that, I think Shemron and Maya Sheo played well. Do you feel like you missed certain types of bowling as a captain, whether it's more spin, whether it's Alzari Joseph? Is that a challenge and a learning as you try and take some boxes as well? No, I think there's quality bowling in our unit. You know, it's just that we didn't stick to our plans. And once, no, no matter who is bowling, if you don't stick to your plans, you will always find yourself under pressure when you're bowling to quality batters. You said you felt like you were 10, 15 short. At 57 for four, that was perhaps a key period of play that didn't allow you to get as many runs. What was it like facing the wrist spin in the first innings? Was it difficult? Yeah, from the start of the series, we always know it's gonna come down our we'll bat wrist spin. Today, we didn't particularly bat it well in the power play. In the, in, in the middle overs, we find ourselves 50 or 60 for four. And if we can just keep on as a batting group, improve on that and keep batting the spin good, then, then we'll, we'll, we'll do well. 2-0 up in the series, now it's 2-2, deciding game tomorrow, do you feel like momentum is slipping? How do you try and keep your team motivated? I think it's just it's just like the, the, the series says, it's 2-2, both teams play good cricket to reach where they are, and you know, tomorrow is a final, and, and in a final, I'll, I'll back West Indies, so hopefully tomorrow we can come out on top. I noticed that you went off the field for a little while too, you've got some strapping, are you feeling okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling okay, I'm ready to lead the guys tomorrow again. Well, all the very best for tomorrow, Rovman, and tough luck for this one. Thanks, sir. Rovman Powell, captain of the West Indies. He's supposed to be the home captain, but let's get Hardik Pandya in now, who feels like home. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe we should start with that. You have the support of the home crowd, if I could say that. Yeah, I think there are more Indians than, um, you know, I've seen in a quite while now. And uh, the way they've been supporting, they've been coming and coming, coming up in numbers and you know, uh, you know, kind of come there, out there for us to, you know, make sure that we give them some entertainment. It looked like India was so far ahead of the game because of the opening partnership. You've spoken of you wanting to back a team with bowlers and your batters need to pick up the responsibility. How pleased were you with the way Gil and Jaiswal batted? Ah, brilliant. Uh, you know, as, as we have seen, the, there is no doubt in their skill set. You know, it was about the fact that, you know, kind of they spend some time on the weekend, which, you know, I still believe that, you know, we, we will, going forward, we will have to take, um, you know, responsibility as a batting group and help out our bowlers, you know, because um, as I always, always believe that, you know, bowlers win matches as well. You know, if they can get you a couple of wickets, which is important, you can control the game. And I think today also, obviously, they, they got uh, some runs in the end, but because I I think with a couple of wickets which we took in the middle kind of harmed them and obviously then Shubman and uh, Yashashvi are brilliant and especially Yashashvi and Shubman both together the way they ran you know in this heat and at the same point of time making sure they finished the job uh, you know it was very pleasing to see. 
you were two nil down in this series. You've had a flying start to your captaincy career in franchise cricket and international cricket. We've seen you do different things as captain with the ball, with bowling changes. It seems to have worked. Could you tell me what's different in the last two games? Have you felt like you've been tactically sharper? Uh, not really. Uh, I mean, um, I, I, I always I like to captain uh, how, how I see the game. Uh, it's about um, how the game is possessing, it's how, how the game is going, and I like to go with my instincts. And um, uh, I mean, see, if, yes, we lost two games, but the first game it was our, our own uh, errors which we did, which we were cruising quite well, we bowled really well, we were chasing well, and at the end, in last four overs, we kind of messed it up and uh, did not cross the line. So I don't think we did much different in the next two games, but definitely we spoke in the group that, you know, these are the games which you kind of step up and, you know, all these games kind of show character and um, boys took it to their strive, um, you know, they were were they're happy to kind of take out the challenge and make sure that uh, all these games gives us a lot of confidence, you know, we, we, have, we have played before series is where we have cruised and, you know, uh, we have made mistakes at, at a juncture where it does not hurt much, but uh, the two games which we played, it kind of reflected us that, you know what, now it's time to pull up our socks and, you know, make sure that, you know, we play some kind of good cricket and at the same point of time set some standards and I think exactly the boys did that. Never has a team come back from 2-0 down to win a five-match men's T20i series, but at the back of these two wins, you think your team's up for it and a favourites going into the decider tomorrow? In T20 cricket, no one's favourite. Uh, you have to turn up and play good cricket and uh, respect the opposition. Uh, they played. Uh, they are two. They were two up, two nil up uh, because they played better cricket than us. So tomorrow is no different. Tomorrow we turn up, um, do exactly what we did today, and uh, hope for the best. It's getting order and hotter, Ardik. So I'll let you go. Well done today to you and your team, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ardik Pandya, captain of India. They've leveled this five-match series 2-2. Two, two. We're all set for a decider tomorrow. Fans contingent gathered here at uh, this stadium here in Florida. The West Indies decided to bat first today. They were limited to 178 for eight. Hetmeyer got his highest score of the series, his second consecutive half century here in Florida, dating back to August last year. And then India. 179 for one, the largest margin of victory for India against the West Indies in terms of deliveries remaining, winning by nine wickets. Jaiswal and Gill, the main architects. Yeah, the heat still, it's palpable really, and the fans are still here. Ronak has joined us after the presentation, Samuel Badri alongside him. Ronak, let's start with you, the victorious Indian team how will they feel about today's performance, given the magnitude of it? I think the opening partnership and the might of what it shows will give them a lot of satisfaction. They made a, a personnel change in Ishan Kishan for Jaiswal with the intent of having this kind of impact with the series on the line. So that they've got it and stayed alive in this series, Bish would give Hardik Pandya a lot of, uh, a lot of relief. And he said that too. At the, uh, at the presentation. He's happy that his batters are batting better, which is something they had to do after the first two games. So that's a big tick because the West Indies still did get an above pass score. So this was not an easy chase. It's made to look a lot easier with the way India batted. You used the word there. I'll come back to you on it. You said relief for Hardik Pandya rather than satisfaction. I'm just going to let you stew over that word for a moment. For the West Indies, though, Samuel Badri, given their power play start with the bat, how will they be feeling? Yeah, they'll be very disappointed. I thought they started off with a lot of intent, Kyle Mears, the way he played. And looking at the surface, they knew that they needed to get upwards of 180. Rothman Powell himself mentioned that they were a few runs short. I think that they needed uh, above 200, maybe even closer to 220. So from a batting standpoint, the period where they lost those three wickets for just three or four runs, that hurt them significantly. And then also from a bowling standpoint, they don't seem to have any sort of wicket-taking threat in the absence of Alzari Joseph. And that's a, a very significant thing given the context of the series. So they'll have a lot of introspection, a lot of reflection to do tonight, a lot of planning, a lot of strategizing to come tomorrow to try to challenge an Indian team that's in the resurgence, that are in the ascendancy and that are very confident at the moment. Yeah, that was three for three in eight balls when cool deep went through with uh, Puran and Powell in his first over. Now, Shimon Hetmeyer mm. 
highly talented. We've been looking at him all one day series and this T20 series. What impressed you today? Very good from Hetmeyer. This is what he's been, this is why he's back in the West Indies team, Bish, to bail them out of difficult situations. We can keep going on about when we'd like to have Hetmeyer bat, at what point should he enter into the innings. Good memories of this ground, a score last time, a score today, mature innings to give them a competitive score. I think what would be disappointing for Rovman Powell is his batting guns don't seem to fire together. Right. Hetmeyer has gone quiet when Puran and Powell have got some runs. There's an issue at the top of the order. We haven't quite seen the collective batting might of the West Indies, but at least one by one they're ticking things. Hopefully it'll come together in a decider tomorrow. Relief or satisfaction? I give you five minutes. For Hardik? Yeah. Even if he says satisfaction, and he is a man who's supremely confident, very likable as a captain, yes. there's no doubt that he'd be relieved that from 2-0 down, they're 2-2. I mean, you can't hide a sense of relief. The Indian captains don't like losing. Indian fans don't like losing. And Ardik Pandya is a proud captain who's been flying in franchise and international cricket. So 2-2, as well as his team has played, without making a lot of changes with the odd exceptions, there would certainly be a sense of relief, which will now turn, perhaps, into a satisfaction of a series win tomorrow. <sighs> He runs a tough school. I'm going satisfaction. I don't care what Ronock says. Relief, satisfaction. Nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we go to, to now a couple of 20-somethings, uh, Yashas Vijay Swal, Samuel Badri, who's 21 years old, and Ashubman Gill, who's 23. And this opening partnership, the highest, I think, in T20Is for India. Your thoughts? Yeah, against any opposition as well. I just was wondering how he would have played today, given the fact that he failed on debut out in the first over. I think it was the fourth delivery. But his very first delivery today was a smashing force. So it shows that he has a lot of confidence in his ability and he knows what he's capable of. And in the company of Shubman Gill, we've seen him for uh, quite some time at international cricket in the IPL, the way he plays with so, with so much ease and so much certainty, certainty and assurance. These two today, they were absolutely phenomenal. They really showed how good a batting surface this was, how um, lack of penetration that West Indian bowling lineup is, and they did the job for their team. Again, in a high-stakes game, they needed to win today to keep the series alive, which they did. And again, the manner in which they did it was really commendable. It's remarkable to see these two young players churn out runs consistently. I know it's the first time that Yashasvi Jaiswal has scored a T20 international half century, but the manner in which he did it, being there to the very end, you oftentimes speak about that from young players seeing their team over the line today was exceptional from them. I think it's a glimpse of the future for India, which is very exciting. Gil and Jaiswal could very well be their multi format opening pair for a lot of time to come. Asterisk, of course, if they live up to the promise of their potential. And you could see when it clicks why it's so difficult for an opposition captain. No real weakness. No real matchup that you can employ. You're almost waiting for either of them to miss you one, which is perhaps the way that Shubman Gill and Jaiswal have gotten out in this series previously. But when they're on song, captains look clueless very easily. So you put them together at the top. At, at some point, India will make firm decisions on what their personnel is going to be at the top of the order in different formats. But if this is a sign of things to come, it's quite scary for an opposition. Let, let, let's quickly nail this last question shared between the both of you. What can we expect tomorrow? Well, we can expect India to come out like this once again. I expect whoever wins the toss will, will want to perhaps think about chasing. We've seen this pitch and, and how it didn't change too much. Um, I don't know what the weather conditions will be like, but in West Indies, they need to fire with the bat and they need to perhaps get Alzari Joseph back into this playing 11 with the series on the line. I'm not going to ask that to Ronak because this morning Ronak said that if India win, they go on to win the series. No need to regurgitate that there again. Thank you very much to Ronak. Thank you very much to Samuel. And just a reminder of how this series has played out. The first two went the way of India and uh, of West Indies, sorry, and then India came storming back in the third and today in the fourth. So series tied, final game tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get weather conditions like this for the fifth cool, stylish fans, T20i, powered by black and white, tomorrow, Sunday 13th, and we'll be on air at 10 a.m. local time with all our bill. Hardik Pandya versus Rubman Powell in the decider here in Florida.
That's it. Yeah. Artiman! 